here at the National Aquatic Centre for the Day 2 Finals of the 2022 Irish Open Championships. I'm delighted to be joined again by National Performance Director John Rudd. John, another very exciting morning session we've just encountered there in the heats. What did you take from it? Well, we've now got five athletes that have done the consideration time for the European Juniors and all five of those athletes achieved the times in the heats. So it's exactly what we're looking for from our up and coming uh, athletes of the future. So we're really pleased with that. Uh, another athlete made a, a cut for the European Senior Championships, Max McCusker in the 100 free. So you've got to take that in the morning, it's good stuff. And I think the revised selection policies where we've forced people to, to look at fast swimming in the morning, you can see that there's no athletes flopping around and doing just enough to make the finals in the evening. They're all making committed swims and that's great to see. And we, we need that. And Nick was suggesting on commentary these consideration times, especially for the younger athletes, you have to qualify with a time during the heat and then onto the finals. You might be able to, I suppose, explain that to some people watching that mightn't understand. Yeah, it's actually slightly different to that. So we have a consideration standard and they can achieve that in the heats or the finals. If they're doing the heats, it's done because that's what we want. We want to see them commit in at 9, 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, now, if they don't achieve the time in the heats, there's a time that they've got to be within for them to have the chance to do it again in the final. So it prevents athletes from floating up and down, taking the morning too easy, not really stimulating for a, a great final swim in the evening, and ultimately not learning what international swimming is going to be about. Because, like I said yesterday, our swimmers have got to be delivering first thing in the morning to get through the rounds. So if they don't get it in the morning, they've got to be within a certain percentage or they've drawn a line under themselves. And um, so we've got one or two that just missed it, but were within the fraction that they needed to be to have another pop again tonight. And looking at the 100 metre freestyle, for example, five very competitive heats, and you have, as you mentioned before, Max, but even in that third heat, say Callum and David Thompson going at each other pretty much from uh, the first stroke in, you know, that must be something that you must enjoy as watching this on, that the two of them are spurring each other on to get that faster time. Yeah, it's because there's so much to swim for. You know, the likes of Callum Bain and Jordan Sloan and um, Dave Thompson, you know, they're trying to make a Commonwealth Games team. And then you have Max McCusker and Robbie Powell and the other guys trying to make a, a Europeans team. But between them, they're all pushing each other on. And there's some depth there. And let's bear in mind that neither Shane Ryan nor Jack McMillan, potentially our leading 200 freestylers, are, are competing at the competition. You can see the depth that we're creating. That's a really tough A final to qualify for. Um, you know, when you think that there's, you know, three out of each heat are almost certain to get in, but who's going to be the 10th guy? It's, it, it's pretty tough and, and it's just what we need for our relays and having our first relay at the Olympics uh, in Tokyo for the best part of 50 years, I think has really spurred everybody on as to what relay swimming can do for them, but for Irish swimming as well. And looking ahead, as you say, to those relay teams, that sort of competitive action that you're seeing in the pool now must be really encouraging for you that you're going to have those difficult decisions to make. Yeah, and what's nice is it's a blend of older guys that are in the twilight of their careers and young bucks coming through that are ready to take them on and challenge them. And that's a really healthy mix, you know, experience and youth between, that, between those two areas, uh, you often get the, the greatest relays. And just looking forward to this evening's action, what are you looking forward to the most? Um, I'm looking forward to the female 100 breast, where we get uh, Neve and Molly and Ellie go head to head, plus others. That'll be really good. The men's 100 freestyle final is going to be uh, going to be pretty hot. So I would say they'd be the the two highlights for me. But again, if you look if you look at the heats this morning, there's there's not a final that's uh, that's to be missed. Yeah, very much so, and well put, John. We'll be getting into the action right now. Thanks very much for John Rudd for joining me yet again, previewing the day two finals. I'll be getting into it right now. Yes, good evening and welcome back to the National Aquatic Centre for Day 2's finals of the Irish Open Championships for 2022. I was delighted to be joined by John Rudd yet again to preview some of the action and review some of the morning action, which was thrilling this morning if you did manage to catch that session from half nine till around 11 o'clock. But we'll be here for the next 
couple of hours to take you through some fascinating finals. And fingers crossed it'll be just as competitive and as exciting as it was last night. Andrew Blair White here, joined again by Nick Quinn, as I will be throughout the entirety of the week. And Nick, another exciting session of finals to come ahead and I'm sure that that tension and that nervous excitement is brewing backstage. Yeah definitely I was walking around poolside just before uh, just before we started here chatting to some of the coaches and some of the swimmers and for sure the excitement is definitely building we've got some spectators in the house so should be a good atmosphere and hopefully we'll see some fast swimming. And for those involved in, in potentially multiple events throughout the course of a competition you would know this from your time swimming how is it, you know, difficult almost to compare the, the, the mental load, the physical load, and how important is it to stay on top of that during the week? Yeah, definitely. I think you said there the mental load, as well as obviously the physical load, is so important to a meet like this that's five days long. It's an emotional roller coaster from day to day, and from heat to heat to finals, it can be an emotional roller coaster. So staying on top of your emotions and making sure you're keeping everything in check and not getting too high or too low is so important to allow you to get through the five days of racing and perform at your best in e each day and each event that you're doing so managing that is really important and then obviously on the physical side of things making sure you're swimming down you get enough uh, good recovery and good nutrition between races and between days yeah well, we've got a jam-packed schedule for you starting off with the 400 meter im we've got a junior final and a senior final for that for the men's 400 meter im we then move on to the 200 meter backstroke for the women where we've a b final junior final and senior final for the men 100 meter freestyle, we've got a B final. We also then have a junior final and a senior final. And for the women's 100 meter breaststroke, we have a B final, junior final and senior final. And for the 200 meter backstroke for the men, we have a B final, junior final and senior final. We have a 1500 meter freestyle uh, heat final for the women and followed up by the final event on our card this evening the 50 meter butterfly for the men b final junior final and senior final and who are in front of you right now is the junior final for the 400 meter im and in lane one is alex barrett the 15 year old from black rock we've cormac farron in two from bangor uh, in three is dara horgan from limerick in four is alexander mcaleer from galway in five is benji cummings from ards in six is Ewan McLeod from ESB, Ben Merrigan in seven from Dolphin, and Ben Wilson in eight from Ards. We were discussing this morning during the heats just how difficult the IM is as a race. These youngsters trying to get a big chance here to win a junior final. Yeah, definitely. Trying to win a junior final is a, is a big thing in an Irish Open, so these guys will be hoping to go sub five minutes and hopefully should be a good race. And as always, we'll be handing over to Andrew Bree. All for right, the call. welcome back to the final session, day two here at the National Aquatic Centre. We're starting it off with a 400 IM. Why not? Benji Cummings up and at it, 0.62 reaction time. He's in lane five. So Benji was a 504, or about two seconds behind the fastest qualifier. That's Alexander McAleer, representing Galway. He's on a 502. But it's lane number six, Ewan McClough taking this one out on a sub-30 split. The only one under 30, 29.81 to the wall. Benji looking pretty comfortable though there with that long stroke. Nice head position. Also in the mix, coming through now, is Ben Merrigan from Dolphin. So we got the two blue cops closest to me. Benji there, the Galway swimmer looking pretty controlled. All right, so 100 meters done, 104.97 for McLeod. Second, Cummings on a 107.32. And then third, McAleer on a 108.58. Okay, not too much else. Ben Wilson out in the corner, but that's all right. He's a youngster. Great opportunity for him to race here in the final sessions. So coming through now, first 50 of the backstroke. We know Cummings in five has got a strong breaststroke, so watch out for that. The Galway man making moves as well. The Galway with the white G and the black cap in lane number four, fastest qualifier. McAleer. So 42s out to 46s. 
And then we've got a few characters over there, Cormac Fallon, Farron in Bangor in two, and then Dara Horgan in three from Limerick. They're having a nice race, actually. There's anyone's race as now we approach the halfway mark. We got one, two, three, four, five, almost in a line. Very, very close, but race leader coming through. Let's see what his breaststroke's like. So he needs to move now to hold on to 21.15. McAleer and Cummings and Horgan now have closed the gap. They're just behind about three seconds on 224s. But it's breaststroke time here in Dublin. Look at the center lanes. The yellow lanes, that distance per stroke. Just cruising through on the glide phase. That's what it's all about. So the ESB swimmer, Ewan McLeod, is now... He's being reeled in, stroke by stroke. So 400 IM here. This is gonna be the most challenging part of the race, especially the second 50 of this breaststroke. Benji Cummings from Ards. He'll have about six watches from the coaches on him right now. Let's see what he's gonna do. Can he win this? Or will McAleer's freestyle bring him home? There's only two seconds between them from the prelim swims, but it's Cummings now. I might have to take a stroke rate here. Oh, 31 stroke rate, nice and controlled. Very, very, very impressive. So here we go, what has he got? Has he? Has he reserved energy for the last 100? Benji Cummings turns and a 3.47.86. He's just under two seconds up now. McAleer from Galway. So let's see what they can bring home on this last few meters. Cummings is fighting. I'm not gonna lie. He looks a wee bit tired on the shoulders, but it might be enough. It might be enough. Oh, I don't know. Look at McAleer go. He's got that tempo up. I think he's going to take him. Cummings cannot see him right now. He's breathing to his left. That's why it's so essential to train and breathe to both sides. Race tactics. Race strategy. It's Galway. Galway now from the west. He's coming through. Cummings is tying up big time with 35 meters to go. Oh, it's Galway. That's why he's the fastest qualifier, folks. 25 meters to go now. McAleer. Looking really, really good. Taking this junior final, first final of tonight's race card. We have got some serious races. Cummings now tying up even more. He's dropping to third. Put your hands together. Nice swim, Galway, all the way through. McAleer wins at 4.56. He smashes his morning time by about six seconds. 4.56.42. McLeod comes through in a 4.59 and... Cummings also under that five minute mark. Nice job, top three. What a fantastic race. Switched up all the time. There's all your 400 diameters done. Good job, fellas. Yes, that's final. That junior final going the way of Alexander McAleer from Galway, from Ewan McLeod, who finished very well on that freestyle leg. Benji Cummings back in third. And just showing it really with McAleer in that 400 meter IM, just he was behind for the first two strokes and I managed to kind of pull it out of the bag in the latter two. Yeah, definitely, that's what happens in a 400 IM. Benji Cummins took that out really strong and he was leading by a good few seconds by the time we got through the first 200. But then Ian McLeod and Alexander came through in the breaststroke and Alexander had that last finish on the freestyle leg. Uh, and it just shows that the different strengths of the swimmers on each of the legs. Um, coming to the four and that's how you got Alexander winning on the back half of that race there yeah very much so very strong swim 456 42 two other men there McLeod and Cummings going sub five minutes plenty of them improving on their time this morning as well which moves us on very nicely to the senior final which Liam Custer was by far the fastest qualifier this morning at 430.22 but Caden McCarthy, 4.39.04, we know from his track record he can swim a lot quicker than that. Yeah, definitely. I think I'm expecting to see a lot, a big chunk of that time taken off by Caden this, this evening. I think we look to him to be 
right there with Leem at halfway and then see I think his breaststroke might be having the better up, upper hand on Leem so it'll be interesting to see if they're, if they're level at 200 how the race plays out but I think you can look for Caden to take this race out a lot stronger than he did this morning. Yeah, so going through that 400 metre medley senior final field starting off in lane 9 is Niall McGeown from Bambridge 18 years of age just over the five minute mark is time this morning in lane zero from Aer Lingus is Ben Moran, the 17 year old. In lane eight from Glen Alban, also 17 years of age, is Cormac Donnellan, who will be going far side in eight. In lane one is James Cummings Candle from Ards. In lane seven is Ronan Kilcoyne from Sligo. In lane two is Matthew Hand from R. It's also 17 years of age. Good time at 4.46 this morning. As can be said for Ronan Fahey in lane six, 17-year-old from Trojan. In lane three is Adam Wilson from Bambridge, 4.45 this morning. And then the two main protagonists, Caden McCarthy, from NCL in 4.39.04 this morning, the 22-year-old, and Liam Custer, representing Sunday's well in lane four. 18 years of age, 4.30.22 this morning. Yeah, that was a strong swim from Liam this morning. He was under the European Junior consideration time, so we'll be looking for him to see if he can move that time on a bit faster again this evening. And I think it should be a great race between him and Caden in the middle two lanes here. Yeah, that junior record is currently standing in the 4.26 bracket for Custer to chase that. Could be a big ask, but he swam very impressively yesterday evening and backed it up this morning. Be interesting to see how McCarthy goes in five. All right, folks, it's going to be a good race. We got Custer in the middle. He is entered on a 4.28, but he went 4.30 this morning. We got McCarthy, we got Wilson beside him. Look out for Hand, and then look out for the Trojan swimmer in lane number six as well. It's all gonna be pretty stacked up, but we'll see if Liam Custer is gonna go sub 4.30. That's gonna be his goal. He's had a pretty good meet so far, and it's neck and neck now. Who's that out in the corner? Matthew Hand going for it, he is. Madman is going for it, 28 45. I like it. Strong breaststroke, so we'll see where he lands after this 100. But it's Cade McCarthy now from Limerick coming through. McCarthy, Custer, Hand. I like this attitude of Hand. He's taking this one out. And remember, folks, a lot of psychological stuff going on when you turn and realize someone's so far in front of you. It ain't fun. But here we go. Lanes four and five. Coming through, they were 102 this morning. They're now 101. 101 lows, 101 mid. Hand is still in the game on a 102.7. And then we go out to Cormac Donnellan from Glenalbin on a 105.75. right, so Hand is still in the mix there. He's still third, just about, right beside him, Adam Wilson. Both good breaststrokers, so it's going to be a nice fight coming up in about 55 meters for them. The rest of the guys turning with nothing between them. We got 0.6 or so between them as these guys now finish off their backstroke campaign with about 30 meters to go. Hand dropping back. Wilson now moving up into third, hand and fourth. Then we have lane number six, Ronan Fahey from Trojan in the green cap there. He's holding on for fourth, but he's going to be pressured by lane seven and eight, Kilcoyne and Donnellan as we approach halfway. So they were 209, now they're 207s. I'm liking this. So on paper, Custer should be a 427, 428. Let's see how the breaststroke maps out. So like I said, look out over there in lane number two and three, Hand and Wilson, stroke for stroke right now. We'll check in with Custer here. So Benji Cummings earlier with a 31-1 rate. All right, so here we go. Liam Custer on a 33-stroke rate. Very controlled. A little bit 200 brasty, but that's okay. 
He's turning now on a 245.48 to McCarthy's 246.8. Okay, the dynamics now, 400 IM. This is an A final, folks. Get behind your swimmers, especially on the breaststroke. They can hear it all, unless they're wearing two caps. But it's Custer all the way through. So he's heading back out stateside. I think he's Florida based. Oh, look at McCarthy though. He's not giving up. He's, he's caught a little bit on that last five or 10 meters. Neck and neck, folks. 100 meters to go. We love a good race. 3, 24, 49. Seven one hundredths of a second up on Liam Custer. Who wants it more? So we got Sunday's Well Swim Club. And we have our national center in Limerick. But it's Custer coming through. He's a tough cookie. He swam that 200 fly yesterday with a very impressive win. Last 50 was strong. Adam Wilson now making a move. He's moved about a body length up on Matthew Han from Ards. 3.55, one to 3.55, it. It looks more than 0.7 of a second, but these guys are battling. And he's there, mid-40 stroke rate, 44 on that one. Really good, really controlled. Make sure you make some noise, folks, when they hit that wall. He's gonna be well under 432. Check the board, he's under 425. 424, 50, hits the wall first. Great to hear some noise at the National Aquatic Center. Candon McCarthy on a 425 as well. He'll be happy with that. I think it's gonna be Wilson and then Hand rounding out your top four for this big final tonight. Wilson hits the wall on a 442.22. 42 is all the way, and then Matthew Hand on a 445.1. What a brilliant swim between those two, Liam Custer and Caden McCarthy. I think based off our calculations and our records, I think Liam Custer has just broken a national junior record there at 4.24.5. Yeah, it's a brilliant swim from Liam, ta Liam taking six seconds off his heat time this morning to go 4.24, and I think he's really helped out by Caden McCarthy there. They had a real good tactical battle in that Caden tried to hang on to Liam on that back row leg and really came attacked on the breaststroke. The second 50 of the breaststroke, Caden really attacked, but Liam is a predominantly a distance freestyler and that really showed on that last leg. He just had that extra little bit on the freestyle to pull away from Caden and dip under that Irish junior record, which was set only a couple of weeks ago by Jack Casson. So uh, some really exciting young 400 IM swimmers for Ireland coming up. So it's really exciting for, for, for Irish swimming in general. Yeah, very much so. Caden McCarthy as well. What a swim from him. 14 seconds shaved off his morning time. This goes to show the ability he has as well. But that Irish junior record has been confirmed on the big screen there from Liam Custer. A superb swim for 426 for Liam testing, Custer. One, two, one, two, yeah, one, two, brilliant, testing. brilliant swim from Liam. I think that's testing, the first testing. Irish record of the meet. Uh, so he'll be delighted with that, I'm sure. And he's got lots, lots more swimming left to come this week in the distance freestyles. And the, so he, he started off great with the 200 fly yesterday, and he's carried that into today with the 400 IM. And it, that was a brilliant swim by Caden. That's right on his entry time and personal best of uh, as well. So I reckon he'll be pretty happy with that as well. So a great start to the final session. And how does that momentum count? As you say, he swam so well yesterday. We, we commented on it when he finished so well in the 200 fly. Does that give you the necessary kind of almost belief? Not that they're lacking belief, but does it must go down as a good help and then to swim so well this morning as well, just from a confidence perspective? Yeah, swimming is such a confidence-based sport that if you can start day, day one off in a really positive fashion, it just fills you with belief that you're going to carry that through to all your other races. So the way he was able to come back so strong in that tuna fly last night uh, and in that 400 400 IM there on that freestyle, he was so strong on that finishing leg. Should fill him with loads of confidence heading into his distance freestyle events coming later in the week. And a swimmer who's swimming with confidence is a dangerous swimmer. You, you'll often see it's like a, a rolling ball just gathers momentum. Yeah, very much so. Uh, it's a fantastic way to start off our evening with Liam Custer breaking the Irish junior record, beating Caden McCarthy in the process. The two of them well, well clear. 
in the 400 IM, which prompts a change in competition for us. Moving on to the 200 metre backstroke for the women. We've got the B final to start us off with. Four swimmers here on this occasion. In lane three is Heather Fain, the 17 year old from Dolphin. In four is Cara Ozing, the 19 year old from Temple Oak. In five is Louisa Humphreys from Larne, 15 years of age. And in six is Mia Whelan O'Connor from ESB. So the B final of the 200 metre backstroke will then move on to the junior final, followed by the eagerly anticipated senior final, where we're going to see Maria Godden, Danielle Hill and Jenna McDougald all do battle in that one in just a couple of minutes' time. Starting off with this B final, Fane, Ozing, Humphreys and Whelan O'Connor in that order. Cara Ozing with a 2.30 swim this morning. C comprehensively the best of these four. Interesting to see how they will get on today with the pressure of a final here in the National Aquatic Centre. Okay, thank you, thank you. Here we go. 200 meters backstroke. So 34 mids from earlier. Fastest qualifier, Kara Oshin. So pretty close, 34-41 for Oshin. All pretty stacked up on this opening 75 as we come through. That's 75 meter mark, all looking pretty comfortable. We should see a little bit of action on that third length. Why am I not seeing these names? Okay, turning just over 110, 111.52 for Oshin. Second, 112.56 for Humphreys. Heather Finn from Dolphin on a 112. Nothing between these swimmers, just a slight lead for the Temple Oak. Backstroker now as we come through, 125 at 75 to go. Looks like she's gonna move away from the rest of the field. All right, final turn, 149.44 to the feet. Who's pulling up second? It's the Dolphin Swimmer, very, very close though. 152.8 to the Lauren Humphreys on a 153.1. And then Whelan O'Connor having a good fight there, closest to me with the blue ESP hat. So this is our B final. Coming to a close, we've got junior final coming up next and then A final where it's going to be Gordon versus Hill and not 200 backstroke. Look out for that one. But here we go. Put your hands together. B final, winner, winner. Touches the wall on a 227.07. Dolphin swimmer Heather Fain next on a 232.54. And then we have a... William O'Connor coming through strong in that last 10 to 15 meters on 233.0. Humphreys 234.2. Junior final coming up next. Yes, the 200 meter backstroke B final going the way of Cara Ozing from Temple Oak 227.07, shaving three seconds off her time this morning as well. Very good swim. Yeah, definitely a good swim. I think all four girls there were faster than they were this morning, and that's all you can ask for moving from heats to finals is to. Look back at your race, look at your splits with your coach, see where you maybe make those tactical improvements and then go into the final like that and execute them and you come out with a faster time, you can't ask for much more than that. And how much in these finals does the, I suppose that little bit more adrenaline pumping through the body, does that, is that something that, that kind of comes about or, you know, like one could get perhaps in, in a big football game, big rugby game in front of a big crowd, you get that little added bit, that added 2%? 
Yeah, definitely. I think uh, I used to love racing in big events because you just definitely feed off that crowd, feed off that atmosphere. And as you said, gives you that little bit of extra adrenaline, that bit of extra oomph to try and get every last ounce of energy out of yourself and execute as well as you can the race. So I think coming back for an evening swim, especially after you've had the opportunity to practice your race processes in the heat and then you can, with that added adrenaline, you can practice to make those small improvements that result in the faster time that you're looking for in the finals. Moving on to the junior final now of that 200 meter backstroke. In lane zero, we've got Laura Potts from Temple Oog. In one, we've got Callie Walsh from Terenure. In two, we've got Namone Rogers from Trojan. In three, we have Roisin Lawless from Wexford. In four, we've Cora Rooney from Enniskillen. In five, we've Shannon Byrne from Bangor. Six, we have Zofia Quigley from Ards. Antonia Sek is in seven for Sunday's Well. In eight is Isla Henry for Lisburn. And in nine is Sophie Nolan from Terenure. All of these between the ages of 14 and 17. Laura Potts near side in zero, the youngest of all of them in 14, uh, 14 years of age. Cora Rooney, the fastest qualifier this morning with a time of 2.28.17 in lane four. Shannon Byrne at 2.29.07 as well. So not too much between the top couple here. So it's going to be another competitive junior final ahead of us here in the 200 metre backstroke. We'll be then moving quickly on to the senior final after that, which should be a cracker as well. Already seen an Irish junior record broken on the card this evening, if you've only just joined us. So it should be a fantastic, another hour and a bit of action here in the National Aquatic Centre. All right, here we go. Corner, Cora Rooney, not Corner, Corner, Cora Rooney first in. Now she should drop time. She was about six seconds off her best from this morning. So she trains with her mum. I said that the other day that she's down in Enniskillen with Ben Whiffen, but that was a mistake. So she actually trains with her mum up at Finn Valley, which I've been up there a few times in the beautiful Donegal. I'll say it again, beautiful part of the world. Here we go. So she's, she was a 2.28, so she should be way faster than that. She's out first on a 32.2. As you can see, 1.6 seconds up on her closest uh, rival there, Shannon Byrne from Bangor. So we'll see at the 100, like I said, she should be well under that time. Her best is a 221, that's 221.25. And then this morning she was 228, but that's okay. Sometimes you just have a bad swim, you put it behind you, all good. So it's gonna be Rooney now, turning first. She was a 110.8, look at that already. So she's still way under that time from this morning so we should see a sub 230 100% maybe a 225 226 depending on how she feels on this last 80 meters Shannon there for Bangor in lane number five she's holding on the second being pushed quietly by Sophia Quigley very quietly creeping up there she might make a move off this wall backstrokers like all the strokes apart from breaststroke obviously you're allowed that 15 meter mark but it's Rooney now, nice head position as she turns. I think she got the opportunity to swim in one of those endless pools during lockdown, which always helps. Everybody just adapted. So she turns 146.0, Burn on a 149, and then Quigley on a 150. Rogers not too far behind her on a 151, and then Lawless on a 152. 25 meters to go now. So she's 228.1 this morning. She's gonna blow that out of the water, maybe a 225. She'll be well happy that she's definitely improved on this morning's swim now as we approach five meters to go for the Enniskillen representative from Donegal, 224.02. That's a nice drop, good job, Cora. Second 227.43, also a nice drop, Shannon Byrne. And then Sophia Quigley from Ards. Also under 2.30, look at that. So three swimmers under 2.30, with Lawless just over on a 2.30.11. There's your top four, A final coming up next. Yeah, an excellent swim from Cora Rooney, 2.24.02. Uh, in 
in front of all the way in the junior final to go and win from Shannon Byrne, 227. 4-3, Sophia Quigley 2, 28, 25 and an awful lot of those swimmers improving drastically on this morning's times as well. Yeah, again, it's, it's, it's the aim of the game when you move from heats to finals is improving on your time uh, and making those changes and getting that extra little bit. So great swim by the girls there. Cora was really impressive. She led from the start. She's lovely technique, really still ahead and was great catch position and move, catching the water and moving through really well. So I'm sure she'll be happy with that swim and it's great to get a win in the junior final. Yeah, certainly a case of putting her experience to use there and getting out in front and was never really in doubt from then onwards. To be honest, always in control. And ended up winning comfortably. Which moves us on as we see the junior final on our screen there. Going off into the background, we will be moving on to the senior final. Would be a fantastic race. We've got Maria Godden in here, who's probably is more for a specialist event in comparison to the likes of a Danielle Hill. But we've seen, obviously, from Danielle with how she swam this morning, how we know she can swim on sh in shorter distances. She's always going to be a danger. Yeah, for sure. Look, Danielle is so talented, and she's got that speed. So I'd expect to see her use that in the 200 there and get out fast. And then it'll be whether Maria can overtake her on the back half of the, of the 200 but I think it should be a good race I think we'll see a really positive swim from, from both Danielle and Maria in this and I'm looking forward to it yeah, Coming out to compete in lane 9 is Aoife Doran, the 16 year old from Aer Lingus, in lane 0 is Nave Putney, the 18 year old from Ards, in 8 is Lauren Farr from NCL in lane 1 is Rebecca Lowe the 20 year old from UCD in 7 is Beth Nolan from Sunday's Well in lane two is Leah Bailey from New Ross. In lane six is Lottie Cullen from Swim Belfast. In lane three is Jenna McDougald, also from UCD, 23 years of age. In lane five is the aforementioned Danielle Hill. And in lane four, the one to beat, Maria Gordon from NCL. Should be a super race this, you'd have to imagine. It's lanes three to five that we're going to be concentrating on here. Yeah, I think so. I think the, the race will be won, as you said, in those lanes three to five. Um, Danielle definitely looked like she was conserving a bit of energy this morning, so I'd expect her to go a little bit, a good bit faster. And I, I think Marie will take some time off her heat soon as well, so it should be a good race. Soon. Yes, definitely would be a cracker this the senior women's final of the 200 meter backstroke Putney Lowe, Bailey, McDougald, Godden Hill, Cullen, Nolan, Farr and Doran All ten swimmers looking to make a big impression here on the big stage of the Irish Open Championships going to be heading over to Andrew Bree for the call of the big one. All right, this is the A final women's four, nearly said 400 I am, 200 meter backstroke fastest qualifiest in Maria Gordon. She is entered on a 216, but look out, her best is 212. But Daniela Hill says, I don't care. She's taking this one out nice and fast. Let's see what they turn in. There were 32s this morning, gonna be well under that. 31 point, 31.27 for Hill. We have 32.0 for Cullen, swim Belfast. And then in third, 32.0 also for the UCD swimmer, McDougal. Gordon, fastest qualifier, is actually in fourth. So she might be looking at different tactics. So I'm thinking Hill's gonna be cruising through this 100 meter mark in about a 103, 104. And then working that third 50. See if she can hold on and take the win. So it's Hill, 105, 105.6, still there. Gordon now has moved up from fourth into second on a 106, 67. Cullen's still there on a 107. McDougall's still there in a 107, then the rest of the field break out to nines and then up to 12s. 
But here we go. We're looking for about, it was a 140 fastest seed in this morning at this wall, 140.6. But as you can check the clock, they're going to be probably a 138. Oh, maybe just under. Tightening up a little bit. Both of them tightening up, 140.0 to 140.5. So it is a fight now as we approach the last 40 meters or so of this race. It's Hill. Hill's looking pretty tired. I don't think she can hold on. She's moved over Gordon now. Look, she's gasping for air. I can see it from here. So it's Gordon and Hill. Hill's not giving up though. Kicking back, Gordon's looking up. Hill's looking back the way a little bit. Hill changing speeds. Dropping the car back into fourth gear, and she takes off. She's going to go about a 213, 214, 214, 35 for Hill. What a very impressive fight. She was behind there for about 30, 40 meters till the end, and then she just brought it home 214, 35 to Maria Godden's 215, 45, and then rounding out your top three. Great swim from the city. Oh, nearly said it. Swim Belfast, 219, 29 for Lottie Cullen. Good job, swimmers. Yeah, brilliant from Danielle Hill. Yet again, it looks like all for money out of that 150 meter mark that she was gonna get swamped by Maria Godden, who was coming very fast in that last 100, but she repelled and actually found another gear in the end. Yeah, but she did, she found her last gear in that last 50 meters. She just went to her legs and had that little surge on that third 50, Maria Godden really made up a lot of ground on Danielle, who, who we knew, being a more of a sprint specialist, she was out fast at 100 and Maria was just sitting on her shoulder and she really attacked on that third 50 and I really thought she was going to overtake Danielle on the, well she did overtake Danielle halfway through the last 50, but as we just said, Danielle had a little bit of a kick to get over the line and get that touch. Yeah, an extremely good swim as well from Lottie Cullen going sub 220, shaving three seconds off her time to fill out the bronze medal position and a very respectable swim indeed from the 18 year old from Swim Belfast. Yeah that was a great swim for her as well to get on that podium at an Irish Open is a, is a great achievement so I'm sure she'll be happy with that. I actually think that as well as a PB from Danielle Hill she doesn't swim the 200 back very often so I think that was actually a PB for her which is which is great. She saw this event a bit more short course when she was on the ISL with Team Iron she has had to take one for the team and swim at short course so maybe she uh, from her experiences there, decided that maybe it's time to give the 200 back long course a shot, and as she just proved there, it's well worth her entering and having a go with that. Yeah, very much so, just showing her versatility, and again, uh, what's been a hallmark of these last couple of days is seeing plenty of these swimmers take on kind of different courses, different strokes, and, and showing that they're more than efficient in plenty of them. Yeah, definitely. Look, swimmers, we're in the water up to 10 times a week, so there's plenty of opportunity to, to be working on different strokes, whether that's freestyle back row for Danielle or it could be any of, the, any of the strokes for other people. So there's plenty of time for people to work on the technical strokes apart from their main stroke and to make improvements in that. And I think it just adds a bit of variety to your program when you have a few more bows to your, or strings to your bow, I should say. Yeah, very much so. A great win from Danielle Hill, beating Maria Godden into second in the 100 metre backstroke, with Lottie Cullen back in third. That's going to move us on nicely to the 100 metre freestyle for the men's, which is going to be a pulsating encounter, especially that senior final. We saw some brilliant swims earlier this morning. Max McCusker, in particular, with a 49-42. Callum Bain, David Thompson, Jordan Sloan, Jack Grace, you could name them all in that senior final though, all special swimmers and it's going to be a very action packed. Yeah, absolutely. I think if you look at the start sheets and you see that our Tokyo Olympian Finn McGeever is out in the outside lane in lane zero, it's a competitive field. Uh, so I think it'll be a great race and all these boys will be trying to swim as fast as they can but they'll be hoping that each other swim fast as well because they're all hoping to make relays for Europeans and for Commonwealth Games. So. They'll be all looking for fast times and hopefully we'll see a few guys go sub 50, which will be really, really good. And first of all, before we get to the B final, we have Barry McClements swimming here from Ards. And this is the definition of swimmer versus the clock. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's tough. Swimming on your own is tough, but Barry will be here looking to try and he'll have his race plan in his head and he'll be looking, looking to execute that as well as he can to try and get the time that he wants at the end. Um, it's a real mental game at this stage to get yourself psyched up to swim 
in a big pool like this, 10 lanes, and you're the only swimmer in it. So it's a tough ask, but he's, he was at the Paralympics last summer in Tokyo, and I'm sure he'll do a good job here. A big ask for Barry McClements, who posted a time of a minute 57. This morning, looking to go sub-60 on this occasion. OK, one swimmer here in our multi-classification event, Mr. Barry McClemens from Ards. So, seated time. He's a 1 minute point five seven. So, we'll check in at the 50, and we'll check in at the 75, and we'll make some noise if he's getting under that 60. I think that could be his best. Let me check in with the Ards coaches. All right, so we're gonna cheer him on for a sub 60 swim here, folks. Let's start making a little bit of noise with 25 meters to go. Why not? He's coming through and for, uh, this could be pretty good if he can bring it home in 16 seconds or so. He really appreciate that noise, folks. He's out there by himself. Not easy. So here we go, look at that, get in there. 59, 50, oh! Great job, Barry, 60.26. You can't even blink that fast. Nice job, Barry, nice job. Next time through, 59 point, good job. Yeah, not quite for Barry McLemon, 60, 26. He did improve on this morning's time, didn't quite break that 60 second barrier, but a very good swim, especially by himself. Yeah, definitely, swimming that by yourself is tough, so to improve from his morning swim, where he would have been racing in the pool with the other guys, is, is definitely a, a good swim from him, and it was nice to hear the crowd getting behind him there and supporting him, because, as he said, swimming on your own in an event like that is, is, is tough going. Yeah, very much so, very generous applause and cheering from the crowd as we've had throughout the two days a bigger crowd in today than there was yesterday and as we mentioned last night you feel that's something that's just going to build and build and crescendo towards the end of the week yeah you have to think so that the, um, by the end of the week getting to the weekend we have more spectators in, in, in the building and the atmosphere will just as you said build until then and hope we see a lot of fast swimming between, them, between now and then yeah, we're hoping to see that definitely and see these swimmers build and feed off that energy that's coming through here we're going to move on to the b final of the 100 meter freestyle Barry mcclemens there taking home a 60 26 in the mixed class looking ahead to this b final in lane zero is john mulhall from trojan in one is Gene Smith from Bangor. In two is Dara Lynch from Cormorant. In three is Brogan McAvinney from Kilkenny. Killian Colvin in four for the local club NAC. Kieran Sloan in five for LEA. Sam Winston in six for Aer Lingus. In seven is Charlie Cassidy for Dolphin. Oshin Tibet also from the home club of NAC in eight. And Connor Johnson out in nine for Kilkenny as well. Some fast swimmers on show here. As we saw, as we said, the strength of the senior final was always going to precipitate down into this. Yeah, definitely. When you've got such a fast senior final, it means you get a lot of fast guys in this B final. We've got Killian Colvin in lane four, who's also an uh, Irish international water polo player, so he's managing the two sports. So he'll be looking to see if we can get some, some guys to go sub-53 in this, this B final, which would be really impressive. Yeah, it would be indeed. He's coming there in lane four, as you can see on your screens. On the graphic there, Calvin, the quickest qualifier this morning at 53.24, but Kieran Sloan 53.25, and plenty of them within a second and a half of each other. So expect this one to be close, and expect this one to be high tempo as well as we move forward to the B final of the 100 metre freestyle. Ten swimmers ready to go. And we're going to be off to Andrew. All right, first of our 100 freestyle finals tonight, folks. Get those hands ready because there's going to be some serious action in these next three events. We got the B final underway. Killian Colvin fastest in. It's going to be these guys need to be out in about a 25 low or 24 high for any impact on that and try and bring it home as close to 27, 28 as they can. Everybody's in a line on the first 50. 25 lows. Look at that. 25-2. 25-3 and 25-3 again. Anyone's race here, anyone's race, gotta catch up. 
but it's lane number six. He's coming through really good. That's Sam Winston. So all the way through, Winston was a 54-0, and he's going straight on to finish. He wins it, Sammy Winston on a 53-07. Nice drop from this morning. These guys were 54 this morning. That's almost a second off his time. Nice work, Sam. And then second, we have Killian Colvin there in lane number four on a 53-6. And rounding out your top three, Kieran Sloan from Leander on a 53-66. Very close between second and third there, one hundredth of a second. Yeah, Sam Winston taking home that B final, 53.07 and 5.5 of a second in the end as well. Very good swim in lane six from the Erlinga swimmer. Yeah, definitely a great swim. You could see he just, it was really tight coming into those last five, ten metres, but he got his head down, went to straight arm for that finish and was enough to see him get that touch over Killian Coffin in second and Kieran Sloan in third and there's very little, 0 0.01 between those two swimmers. So you see that a lot in these 100 freestyle that there's, the guys are all so tight that you getting that touch and that extra little bit of a reach on the last stroke can be the difference between first and fourth very easily so making sure the details in a race like the 100 freestyle is so important yeah very much so and very good from Sam Winston improving almost bang on a second from his time this morning well, he was 54.05 down to 53.07 so good improvement shown and it bags him the B final so a great improvement from him and we'll move on to the junior final where we'll be also seeing some extremely quick swimming on offer here in lane zero is Aidan Cook, the 18 year old from Kilkenny in one is Ben Riddle, the 17 year old from Ards in two is Matthew Walshussey from NAC in three is Cody Dunyon from Ards as well in four is Connor Fitzgerald in five is Danny Morgan. In six is Thomas Leggett. In seven is John Short, who we've seen in the backstroke competition already so far this week. Adam Colgan is in eight, and Finley Wright is in nine. So that's how they line up when they come out for this junior final. So this will be a really interesting final. I think we've got two guys who are uh, in the right age category for Youth Olympics. So you got Connor Fitzgerald in lane four for Splash World Sharks and John Short will be looking to get under that consideration time for, for the Youth Olympics, which have been held in Slovakia later on this summer. The time that they need to qualify is 52-6-1. So Connor Fitzgerald was just outside that in the heat. So it'd be great to see him get over the line in that. Yeah, we'll have all eyes on the clock in a race such as this and as we just mentioned in regards to the B final it can be such a small matter of margins in these races that determine that 0.2 of a second or 0.3 of a second perhaps Conor Fitzgerald 52.82 or just outside 0.2 of a second from that qualification consideration yeah even just from the heats there's five, five of these swimmers are within 0.3 or 0.4 of a second of each other so really is fine margins in the 100 freestyle very much so, can all depend on just the way a race can pan out. You need everything to go your way in these short events. And that's what the likes of Fitzgerald, the likes of Short, Danny Morgan will all be hoping for. To try and bag potentially that qualification time, but also a junior final at the Irish Open Championships. Just something to be extremely proud of so really intriguing final all eyes on the clock and Andrew will take you home with the junior final okay here we go the junior finals are now breaking out here at about 13 14 meters for some of them and it's going to be a good race I predict I predict it's going to have to be a 51 9 to win this fastest in but he's still in the mix he's going to be turning here he was a 25 3 that's Connor Fitzgerald for Splash World. He's going to hit the wall first. Lane number four, 24 75. These guys are moving. Walsh Hussey in the mix too. Thomas Leggett from Lorne in that black cap. He's in the fight. Look out for Dunyon though. Dunyon's also in the mix. This is going to be anyone's race. So they were 25 low this morning, 24 tonight. 
So let's see, is it going to be a 51 for the juniors? That's a good indication for Irish swimming if we can get two or three of them in that world. Here we go, is it going to be a 51? It is 51-83. Danny Morgan cool mine second just over that magical barrier, 52-22. And then Thomas Leggett from Lauren, nice swim from him, 52-33 with Dunyan in fourth on a 52-5. Ladies and gentlemen, sub-52 juniors, let's go. A superb swim from Connor Fitzgerald going sub 52 there, 51 8 3. Gets that qualification time, and that was a really good swim. Yeah, it's a really strong swim from Connor there. Uh, 50, so I think that's the first time potentially sub 52, so really, really good swimming there. And as he said, under that consideration time for the European Youth Olympic Festival later on this summer, which, which hopefully he'll get called up for that and it'll be a hugely, hugely exciting meet for him it's it's a great opportunity for the young swimmers to get maybe their first international experience at, a, at an event like that so uh, he'll be hoping to be on that plane heading out to Slovakia later on this summer yeah some good swims as well from Danny Morgan and Thomas Leggett Cody Dunyan Matthew Walsh Hussey all sub 53 all improving on those times from this morning as well which is great to see Danny Morgan 52 22. A super swim in lane five there from the man from Cool Mine. Improving the guts of 0.6 of a second from this morning's action. So a really high quality junior final there taken home by Connor Fitzgerald in a very strong time of 51 83, which builds us up very nicely towards this senior final. and as you mentioned, when you're seeing the likes of Finn McGeever in lane zero, Evan Bailey out in eight, Paddy Johnson in nine, you know we're in for a very strong heat here now. Yeah, absolutely. This is going to be a, a really fast final. It's, it's stacked. Uh, you got, we're going to have Max and Callum, the two probably more sprint specialists, are going to take this out hard, this race out hard, and then you're going to see if they can drag the rest of the boys too in the second 50. Uh, and hopefully we'll see a good few guys from sub 50 and that'll put them in a really strong position for putting a relay together for the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham but also for the European Championships in Rome so all these guys will be wanting to swim fast but hoping each other swim fast as well. Yeah, very much so, this is hopefully one of those that they're going to keep spurring each other on here and the way they line up as they've been coming out there in lane 9, Paddy Johnson as I alluded to from Ards, the 21 year old Finn McGeever in lane zero. In eight is Evan Bailey from New Ross. In one is Dermot Sutton from NCL. Seven, Robert Powell, the 400 meter freestyle winner from last night. He's in seven. In two is Jack Grace from Limerick. In six is David Thompson from NCU. In three is Jordan Sloan, also from NCU. In five is Callum Bain from Cookstown. And Max McCuster is in lane four from Dolphin. He was 49-42 this morning, which was the only man to be sub-50. But as you say, perhaps the adrenaline of the final, the, the fact that all these swimmers are in amongst each other, you'd like to hope that potentially we might see three or four of them go under that 50-second mark. Yeah, definitely. Calm Bain, lane five, he's... 50.1 is his PB, so it'd be nice to see him under. And Jordan's been 49 before, so hopefully under. And then drag Davy Thompson along as well. Fast and furious. Coming Folks, up. I don't even want to look at the sheet here. This is going to be so fast. I'm so excited. I hope they can get under 50 seconds to center lanes. McCusker and Bain. Now, Bain was out pretty fast, 23.44. Look out for Sloan. Look out for Thompson. These guys looking for Commonwealth Games status. So we have lane number five coming through, Callum Bain, 23-4. I think he's going to be 23-2, 23-4 again. So we're on it. We're right on it. Who's going to bring it home, though? Can Thompson and Sloan? Sloan's looking pretty good for third, but it's a battle. Look at this, 25 metres to go. Race leader now, Max McCluster coming through. Still in the mix. Sloan making a move. I don't know if it's going to be enough. Thompson's still in about third or fourth. But it's all the way through for Max. He's going to win it. He's going to be a 49. Who else is with him? 49-67 wins it. Being second, 50-0. Third, Sloan on a 50.4. And then Thompson on a 50.9. Nice swim, gentlemen. Frenetic stuff there in the 100-meter final. And it goes the way of Max McCusker. 49.67, the only man again to go sub 50, and that strength in that final 50 was there really evident to see. 
Yeah, definitely. Him and uh, Callum both got a really strong start off the first off the dive and through their breakout the first 15 meters. Uh, Callum was leaving at leading at 50, 23-4, but Max was really powerful underwater. And you see him come off that wall, utilize that, and was breathing every two on the last 50, and then got his head down for the last five meters to take the win in that event. Yeah, Callum Bain, 50.05, a really courageous swim in second. Jordan Sloan, Jack Grace nearside in lane two, ran a, or swam a stormer as well. In 50.7 to come through for fourth. Robert Powell was there, David Thompson, all of them sub-51. But in the end of the day, it was Max McCusker that was the strongest on show. And him and, him and Bain were really in control of that race for the majority of it. Yeah, they're, they're both, as I said, they're both, well, definitely Callum is a 50 specialist and Max is very powerful on that 50 as well. So they probably have a little bit more natural and easy speed than those guys. Uh, and Max was able to bring that home in the second 50 as well. So he's in great form. I think at the time that he went this morning uh, was under the consideration time for the European Championships. So hopefully he'll be on the plane to that. I think Evan Bailey there uh, coming eighth in that final was another PB from this morning and it's under the European Junior qualification or consideration standard as well so another great swim from the young from the youngster Evan Bailey from New Ross training with Fran Ronan so good swims all around there I think yeah very much so I was very impressed by Evan Bailey in the short course championships here before Christmas really a, a coming of age event for him there he was right in the mix in those 100 meter races in in plenty of different events as well including medleys including relays he did it all for new ross and when you're involved with this caliber of swimmer it's only going to bring you on especially as a 17 year old yeah definitely that experience of being in the call room with those senior guys the guys like if you look at the that that field there's so much international representation there you've got max that, that team is Half the teams that has represented Ireland at Europeans and World Championships, you add the likes of Jack McMillan into that, Shane Ryan who's coming off his shoulder injury and rehabbing for the summer. Um, there's some really strong male sprint freestylers in Ireland at the minute, so for Evan to be in amongst them and competing and getting that experience of standing on the blocks next to these guys can only be positive for him moving forward. Yeah, very much so. We're going to have a couple of presentations now which are going to be include the male 400 meter IM and the female 200 meter backstroke so for those of you that have only just joined us here on the stream that 400 meter IM was won by Liam Custer and not only was it won by Liam Custer but it was done so in an Irish junior record time for the 18 year old a fantastic effort from him he's now gladly going to get his hands on that gold medal as well and at such a young age, that mean, it must mean an awful lot for these guys to go out and, and put in a performance like this on such a big stage and go and win your gold medal. Absolutely. He's got one better than he did yesterday. His silver medal in the 200 fly uh, yesterday behind Paddy Johnson. And then today to come in that 400 IM to break an Irish junior record and to get a gold medal. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. That means he's under the consideration standard for uh, European juniors in multiple events now so he'll hopefully really be looking forward to an exciting summer and he'll hopefully be on the plane uh, heading to those European junior championships yeah, It was a super swim and a super race in fact and an awful lot of credit probably for Custer's record must go to Caden McCarthy it's one of those when somebody's just constantly on your tail, constantly pressing you like Caden was, who went 14 seconds you know, um, improved 14 seconds on his morning swim to the final. Like, that's some doing. Yeah, absolutely. That's a big improvement from heats to finals. 400 IM is a tough event, so it can feel a little ropey sometimes, especially in the morning if you're not fully prepped for it. But to get that drop shows real confidence in your own ability. And he took out that first 200 much faster than he did this morning and was right there with Liam and was probably faster split on the breaststroke, but Liam just had enough on that freestyle leg to get the win. But for sure, I think uh, it helped that those two guys were going head to head and bringing out the best in each other. And so we're now going to get the 200 meter backstroke medals in third place there. Collecting that was Lottie Cullen from Swim Belfast. Great swim from her. And the silver medal to Maria Godden, a very good swim in defeat on this occasion for Maria breaking that 216 mark and it was won a 
again by Danielle Hill, the 50 metre freestyle winner from last night, who hasn't gone up to collect her gold medal. I, rec I reckon Danielle could be in the Simdam pool. She's got a lot of races coming uh, up later in the meet, so she could be getting her recovery strategies in place so that her 100 back and her 100 freestyle, which, as we said, the 200 is probably an additional event for her. So those 100 back, which, which is what she qualified for Tokyo Olympics last summer, that's, that's obviously a big one for her. So she has some big races coming up. So making sure that her recovery is on point uh, is probably why she wasn't on that podium for the medal presentations there. And in these situations, is it as as strict almost as that minute by minute in terms of your post-race and pre-race preparations? Yeah, I mean, I think the most important thing after a race is to start that recovery process as quickly as possible. So that, whether that includes hydrating, getting some food into you straight away and then getting in and recovering. Like at, when you finish a race, that lactic acid continues to build until you, start, until you get into the pool and you start to flush that out. So the quicker you get in, uh, you stop the lactic acid peaking and then you recover quicker, flush it out and get ready for your multiple races. It, it's a real skill across a five day meet, managing your energy and managing your recovery. Uh, you see that at the Olympics when guys have really busy, busy schedules, the, de the fine details they go into to make sure that they can perform at every single race is, is so important and it can really be the difference between making a second swim, making a semi-final, making a final or not based on what your recovery was the day before. We'll be moving on to the 100 metre breaststroke here for the women's. Just on that point, though, was it as, you know, looking back at especially your time in Rio, kind of, I suppose, did you have a complete routine set? Was there certain foods you'd only eat afterwards? Were there certain things you'd do in the pool afterwards that, that you wouldn't have done before or you, you did just in routine? No, very much. I think when you get to that stage, you're in your routine. So my swim down, I would have my relatively same warm-up relatively same swim down and you'd stick to the general kind of same foods and recovery strategies that you had practiced for years leading up to a competition like the olympic games it's all about honing these details in the lead up so when you get to a major competition whether that's olympics worlds or europeans that everything is second nature and you don't have to think about these strategies they're already in place yeah, our first hundred meter breaststroke Final here, Shifa Brady in lane three, Ellen Keane in four, and Nicole Turner is in five. Some of the familiar names on site here. Okay, our first race here, 100 breaststroke for the multi-class. We have three swimmers. In lane number three, we got Simone Brady, Ellen Keane in four, and Nicole Turner in five. So a range of times here. The youngster from Lisburn ended around 2.01.56 in lane three. We have Ellen Keane on a 1.26.6 as she takes away from the rest of the field. And then Nicole Turner is entered on 1.48. So these swimmers versus the clock in this race. Turning just under 40 seconds, just over 41.08 for Keane. We have Turner hitting the wall next. So like I said, Keane, 126.6 is her time to beat. Turner on a, on a 49.95 for a 148 time. And then we have Brady on a 56.9. So she can bring it back in around a minute, 101. Be a nice personal best for her. So here we go, closing out now by eight meters to the wall for Ellen Keane. Swims here at the NAC with a white cap. That distinguished white cap Navy riding. She hits the wall 126.65. Did she just repeat this morning's swim? I think she did. Exactly the same. That doesn't happen very often. 126.65 for Keane. Turner now approaching five meters from the wall. She was a 148.1. Let's see if she can get under that. 140. 146 idiot good job chunk of time off that two seconds over 100 meters is a solid effort and then we have brady rounding out these top three first final of the 100 brass stroke she was a 201 she's going to go under hopefully oh just over 202 36 put your hands together great swim ladies
Yeah, very good swims by all three. Ellen Keane, exactly the same as this morning. 126.65. Nicole Turner, 146.88. A nice little improvement for her on this morning as well. She for Brady, 202.36. Another very solid swim from the 16-year-old there as well. So well done to all three. Yeah, it's great. We've got our two Paralympic medals in the water there, Ellen and Nicole. I mean, Ellen, Ellen won gold in this event out in Tokyo. So uh, off the back of that, they're both pre under the minimum qualification standard for World Para Championships, which are in Madeira in Portugal later on this summer. So this will just be a, a preparation meet, all gearing up towards some fast swimming then. Yeah, very much so. Good to see all three swimmers in good heart coming out of the pool. Who's going to move us on to the B final of the 100 metre breaststroke? Which could be another very tight one, really, based off some of these entry times. Having a look at this morning's heat in lane zero, we're going to have Lexi Dunn, just 13 years of age, from Dolphin, a great experience for her. Roisin Nireen is in lane one. Wensiel, Darcy Walker's in two from Bambridge. Amelia Erdy in three from Bangor. Molly Nolte is in four. Swiddy Seals in five is Sarah McCracken from Lisburn. In six is Lisa Cook from Erlingus, as is Holly Clifford in seven, also from Erlingus. Anna McDade is in eight from Enniskillen. And in nine is Abril Allend from Trojan, just 14 years of age as well. So we've got a nice little mix in terms of age groups here and for the likes of Lexi and Abril in, in this sort of a scenario, 13, 14 years of age, there's no better place to come and learn your trade and, and obviously be competing in these finals and this is why these B and Junior finals especially are so so important alongside obviously great to see such fast times in some of the senior finals but for the younger generation coming through having the pressure and as you say going through that whole call room it must be a very good experience for all of them. Yeah, definitely. That's what this meet is all about for, for the younger age groups, is getting that experience, being around those senior swimmers, uh, seeing, seeing them in the pool, and I guess exposing them to, to our Olympians and to all these world-class athletes that we have in Ireland and making these 13, 14-year-olds believe that, oh, maybe, maybe, maybe that's something that I can do. So exposing them to that at a young age is really good because... The younger swimmers will be focused on the Irish Summer Championships, in which days they'll be racing in their own age groups. Um, so that'll be the main focus for them. So this is really just about building experience, getting used to, as you said, the call room and trying to execute your race plan in, in that kind of atmosphere where these senior swimmers are all about you. And would you have tried to have almost picked up little tidbits from some of those senior members or, or is it really very much kind of everyone for themselves in that backroom area? I think uh, I think as a senior swimmer you probably don't notice it but when you're a junior swimmer you, you see the senior swimmers around pool deck and you, you notice what they're doing so uh, I think you do definitely pick up little bits here and there especially in and around the, in and around the swim down pool seeing how they're recovering how they're priming and prepping especially before a lot of these races the seniors will do land priming after their warm up and that's probably a, a new idea for a lot of these junior swimmers about trying to get, get your heart rate up, get your body temperature up so that you're really primed and ready to go once you dive into your race. Fascinating insight as we move on to this B final. Just going through them again quickly. Dunn, Nereen, Walker, Early, Nolte, McCracken, Cook, Clifford, McDade and Allend from lanes 0 to 9 respectively. Zero being closest to us on the screen there. Lexi Dunn all the way out to lane nine on the far side of the track. Molly Nolte, the fastest qualifier, 117.39, but to put into consideration, Sarah McCracken in lane five was 117.40. So 0 0.01 seconds between the two of them based off this morning's time. So be sure to be another tight one here in the B final of the 100 metre women's breaststroke. Be handing you over to Andrew Bree again for commentary poolside as we have done throughout the week thus far and we'll continue to do so as they're about to start off. All right, swimmers in the water, women's 100 metre breaststroke. This is the B final underway. Fastest qualifier from the Swilly, Swilly, Swilly Seals swim team. Say that five times fast. Molly Nolte, she, her best is a 115. 
and she is fastest in tonight on a 117 so expect a little bit faster on this opening 50 she was 35 4 so i'm thinking she needs to be about a 34 4 34 5 at this first wall the yellow cap is making a move from the start 35 1 just under this morning's paced swim here we go let's see if there's going to be a little bit of pressure from sarah mccracken was just on to her coach earlier on today. So they're not fully rested with the Lisburn swim team, but all looking pretty sharp. A final's a final. So it's Nolte now. Nolte and McCracken as they pull away from the rest of the field. Amelia Uri from Bangor in the mix too. Strong kick from Uri. She's coming through nicely. She's going to secure the third, unless there's a bit of pressure from who's out out in one, Roshin Nurian. But it is a fight for first here, folks, in this B final. I think it could be Lisburn, might just get it. Pops the wall first, 115.92. Sarah McCracken, unrested, nice job. Molly Nolte second on a 116.17. And then Uri coming through on a 118.13. Mm, a great swim from Sarah McCracken and Molly Nolte, the two of them. As we discussed on the sea times, we're going to go close, and they have done. Sarah McCracken just getting the touch there and getting that sub-116 time as well. Yeah, definitely. That was a really, really well-paced race by Sarah there. Uh, Molly took the race out hard, and Sarah just was able to pick up her stroke rate and go to that extra little gear and literally just overtook uh, Molly in the last five metres and was able to get that touch by... 0.2 of a second so it was a really really strong swim and as you said a lot of those girls moving their times on from the heats to the finals which is what the name of the game is getting faster as you progress through the rounds yeah very much so great learning curve for plenty of them and Sarah McCracken a very good swim 115.92 improving on that morning time by the guts of a second and a half she'll be delighted with that she takes home the B final here of the 100 meter breaststroke and leads us nicely into the junior final. Now again, we've got a 10 swimmers here. Starting off in lane zero is Eve Burns, 15 years of age, from Leander. The swim club in one is Cara McCormick, the 16 year old from Dolphin. In two is Cara Marr. From Terenure in three is Amy Noble from Asgard. In four is Ava Jones, 14 years of age from Port Marnock. Isabel Kidney is in five from Sunday as well. In six is Ellie Campbell from Trojan. Ava McNamara in seven from Lisburn. And the two from Athlone, Jane Ryan in eight and Leah Connell in nine. So, should be Another tight one here, Ava Jones, the only one to go sub 117 in the heats this morning. So probably the one to beat off that in lane four. Yeah, the 14-year-old from Port Marnock, uh, the only sub has you summer sub 117, as you said. She was just outside making the senior final, so a really talented summer and one to watch for the future. And she'll be looking to improve on that time that she did this morning again in tonight's junior final. Yeah, very much so. Should be another cracker here in the store in the junior final. Ages ranging from 14 to 17 in this one. A great opportunity for plenty of these to advertise their claims for seasons coming. Junior final in the water, women's 100 meter breaststroke. Here we go, fastest qualifier, Ava Jones from Port Marnock, the 14 year old, Swama 116.55. She was out in the 36.1, and it is her in that yellow cap. We had the yellow cap from Nolte in that first heat, and now we've got it here in lane number four. She's going to be pressured, though. Look at Isabel Kidney speaking to her coach Richard there at lunchtime. We tried to break down the world of swimming and figure it all out. We had a good go at it. But here we go. Look at this. She's cruising through. She was at 36.1. She's going to be 34. Whoa, 34.60. 
Kidney also in the mix now, 35-9, all fast in this morning, and then Ellie Campbell from Trojan on a 36-41. As we get closer to the finish wall, here we go, 30 meters. Let's see if Kidney can come through. A nice battle gonna form second and third. The Trojan swimmer Campbell might make a move, but there's no doubt about who's walking away with this one. The 14-year-old Port Marnock under Ann Burtis. Used to swim with her son, Carl, great guy. So here we go, five meters to go. She's gonna completely smash that 116. Put your hands together, 113.34 for a 14 year old all day long. Campbell comes through. She caught Kidney on the last 10 meters of there. Ellie Campbell on a 117.09, finishing off third place. Three one hundredths of a second, very, very close. Sunday's well, Isabel Kidney, 117.12. What a cracking swim from Ava Jones. 1.13.34, taking three seconds off her time this morning and absolutely blitzing them in the junior final. For a 14-year-old, that's some effort. Yeah, it's fantastic swimming from Ava Jones there. I was watching her technique down that first 15. She looked so efficient. She had so much easy speed. She was really driving down into that good, high, streamlined body position and kicking and holding that on that first 50, which meant that when she came off that wall, she was able to pick up the rate a little bit more and still had that energy to bring it home. She was 34 on the way out and 38 on the way back. For a 113, she was the only, only swimmer in that field to come back sub 40 in the second 50, and she was a 38. So really, really impressive swim there from Ava Jones. Uh, and, and one to watch for the future for sure. Yeah, very impressive because she had plenty of them at it for the first 50 when she seemed to be going at a really a very comfortable pace and, and to be able to maintain that, as you say, for that second half, really exciting stuff. Yeah, definitely. The 100 breaststroke is one of those events that you have to use your power and your efficiency and your easy speed down that first 50, which allows you to come off that turn, off that breakout, and start to pick that rate up and pick that energy up. Whereas if you go too high on that first 50 and you're expending energy, you're not getting the return that you want from it, it makes that second 50 a lot harder than it needs to be. And uh, that's when you can see some painful swims that way. Now moving on to the senior final of the 100 meter breaststroke. This should be another very good one. Starting off in lane nine, no better place to start than Ava Jones' older sister, Megan Jones, the 16 year old from Port Marnock. Swam an awful lot together in the short course championships before Christmas as well. In lane zero is Beth Gardner. In eight is Lara McAvoy from Aer Lingus. In one is Kira Aiken from Ards. In seven is Alwyn Cook from Limerick. In two is Grace Davison, also from Ards. In six, Ellie McCartney from NCU. In three is Emer Doyle from NCL. And then Molly Main in five from Temple Oak and Neve Coyne in four from NCD. And really the, the clash here between Neve Coyne and Molly Main is the I suppose the, the big one here in this senior final. Yeah, it should be a really good one here. Both Molly and Ellie both were under the consideration standard for European juniors this morning. So and Mo Molly off the winning the hundred fly last night, she's clearly in form. But Neve Coyne, she's got such uh, a international pedigree in this event and she'll be looking to get that European qualification here uh, she was 0.11 off it this morning so she'll be looking to dip under that and to hopefully secure a place at the European Championships being held in Rome later this summer uh, it should be a really exciting final and hopefully Neve going out strong will will drag Molly and Emer or Molly and Ellie and maybe even Emer Doyle from from Limerick under that 110 barrier yeah it should be a really exciting one this Neve Coin, Molly Main, there's times at stake, there's a gold medal at stake here in the 100 metre. A final, women's 100 metre breaststroke. First up was Coin, a little bit more distance off Molly Main, so we got Coin in four, Molly Main in five. So Molly's best time, 109.45, she was at 110 this morning. Neve's best time 107.2 and she was a 108 this morning as Coyne now makes her way with five meters for the one and only turn in this breaststroke. A little bit of pressure coming from Emer Doyle too but there we go 32-3 so they're already a good second up 32-3 it's Doyle in second on a 32 and then 
Molly Min just over on a 33, but it's NC all the way she goes. An experienced 100 meter breaststroke, picking up that tempo. I'm liking this speed at the end. She's got 15 meters to go. Her best is a 107.26. She might be just off that, but if she can go 107 high or 108 low, that's going to be a nice result. Neve Coyne all the way through, 107. Nice job, Neve. 107.83. Happy with that. Second place, Molly Mann from Temple Low comes through in a 110, similar to this morning. And then Emer Doyle dropping some time in a 110.45. There's your top three, a final. Good job, Brass Jokers. Excellent swim from Neve Coin 107.83. Again, she's taken apart that 100 meter field there. Molly Main got no answers. Neither had Ellie McCartney or Emer Doyle. Emer Doyle with a big swim at 110.45, but Neve Coin getting that time and winning in really decisive manner there. Yeah, that was a brilliant swim there from Neve to go sub 108. Is it's really fast, and that's that's some world class swimming right there from Neve. So it's a brilliant swim from her. She. Molly Main had a great start to 15. She actually popped up ahead, but from that point on, Neve took control of that race. And watching her technique there, she's she's a lovely swimmer to watch. She's able to uh, really drive down into that streamlined position, hold that, and then into the next cycle. So that's what breaststroke swimming is all about. It's minimizing your drag, maximizing your efficiency, and applying power in the right places. And Neve did a brilliant job of that on the 100 breaststroke there. Yeah, absolutely superb from Neve Coyne to take home the 100 meter breaststroke final from Molly Main and Emer Doyle getting a bronze medal as well. And I'd say there'll be an awful lot of happy swimmers there after that. That moves us on to the men's 200 meter backstroke. And we've got a B final, junior final, and senior final on the show here again just the two swimmers that are going to be coming up in the B final it's going to be Fionn Byrne in lane 5 and Daniel Mulholland in lane 6 Mulholland posting a time of 2.24.7 this morning in comparison to Burns 2.28.65 always difficult I suppose in, in as, you, as we said before when it was just one man swimming in the pool. When you're in the, the magnitude of this arena, you have obviously the 10 lanes. Is, is it a little bit di difficult to, I suppose, to get that motivation when you're only in a small field? I don't necessarily know if it's the motivation because the first thing that swimmers do is we're racing the clock. That's the first thing. And um, these guys will be used to having their own targets and setting them because that's what they'll be doing in training. But it is tough to, you really have to focus in on what your race process is. What is your tactics? How do you want to approach the race? How do you want each 50 to feel? And where do you want to be in, at each section of the race? So when you're in a, in a situation where there's only one, two, three people in your heat, it's all really about focusing on your details and almost forgetting about what everyone else is doing. Because sometimes even when you're in a race, um, you can get distracted by what other people's doing. I've often found myself in a race swimming beside someone who should be faster than me. And I'm there swimming beside them thinking, oh, I must be doing really well here. And then you touch the wall, you look at the clock and you go, oh, that wasn't as quick as I was hoping for. So there really is an element of you have to focus on your own processes, whether it's two people like in this race or whether it's a full, full complement of eight or 10 swimmers. So it's finding that balance between racing people and sticking to your game plan at the same time. Well, that's what these two are going to have to do. Fionn Byrne in five, Daniel Mulholland in six. Fionn Byrne from the local club NAC and Daniel Mulholland from Lisburn. Just the two of them going head to head in the B final of the 200 meter backstroke. Which as we saw from the heats earlier, a grueling event, the 200 meter backstroke. Yeah, the 200 backstroke is a tough event. I, I can't say I don't have a huge amount of personal experience. Backstroke was my weakest stroke when I swam, but I know that 200 back in that last 50, it's such a leg dominant event that that lactic acid really builds and coming off that last wall when you're trying to do good under waters and then come into your kick, your legs can feel really, really heavy. So it's about managing that and making sure your pacing is right so that you, that lactic doesn't hit too early. Well, we'll be wishing the best of luck to Fjumburn and Daniel Mulholland. Handing over again to Andrew Bree for the commentary of the B final. 
200 meters backstroke for the men, two finalists for this B final. For all you backstrokers out there, get faster and get here next time through. Stack up these lanes, but Mulholland coming through. The 25 well up in front. He was a 2.24 this morning, but his best time is a 2.17. So we'll use those markers from our prelims earlier on to see where he's at. Burns still there, not letting them get too far ahead. 33-2, pretty much the exact same as this morning. He was 33-26 this morning, 33-21 tonight. So we've got two more finals, junior final coming up next, and there's two back, and then the main final. It'll be a good old race, Nathan Whiffen looking to break that two minutes. Connor Ferguson holds the Irish senior record on a 158. So the Whiffen brothers, the twins, have come on a great deal in these last four to five years. It's great to see. But here we go, halfway through. He was a 110 this morning. He's now a 109.33. Mulholland takes it out, 111.87 for Byrne. And cruising through now, 75 to go. So he should be around at 146 here at this wall. Get under that morning swim. Always nice to get back, get a rest, and then see if you can do a little bit of a faster time at night. 146.55 now for Mulholland. A good three, almost three and a half seconds up on the other finalists tonight for this two back. So again, he was 2.24.7, folks, this morning. Coming through in 2.15 at the minute. So he's going to, looks like he's going to be well under that. Maybe a 2.20, 2.21 if he can hit that final stroke. 2.22.29 from Holland. A nice drop, four second or two second drop from this morning. Burn coming in second on a 2.26.81. There's your B final results. Yeah, two very solid swims on offer there from both Daniel Mulholland and Fionn Byrne, both of them beating their morning times by a couple of seconds as well, which also have a fair amount of satisfaction for the two of them. Mulholland beating Byrne 2.22.29, plays 2.26.81. Yeah, definitely. It's As we were just saying before that race, it's they will have probably watched back their race after this morning's heats or they will have definitely looked at their splits with their coaches and they'll have identified okay maybe I need to take out this first hundred a little bit faster or I can conserve a little bit of energy on the second 50 and attack that third 50 and they'll have highlighted those areas of improvement and they also highlighted some technical areas of improvement uh, that they, they will have tried to adjust it for this final session and that's a lot of the time how you see the, 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 the times get quicker is it's a technical adjustment and then as we spoke about earlier that adrenaline from a, a final situation that, that pulls you over the line as well. And when you're in the water, how easy or how hard, should I say, is it to, I suppose, build that rhythm, you know, almost have that clock in your head of, of knowing what pace you should be going with? Is, is, can you judge it off different swimmers? You were saying where, where you, could, you could be thinking you were you know, at the same time as a swimmer that theoretically should be faster than you, but then he could be swimming a bad race. No, so I think that that's, when it gets down to the details of understanding your own race, that's when it's all about, okay, you have to know your race at that point and you can't judge off anyone else at that stage. So for me personally, in, in my 200 breaststroke, which would have been my main event, I would have known the stroke counts that I wanted to hit at each 50, and I'd be able to make adjustments based on, I could be, five strokes at 25 in the 100 breaststroke and I'd be like okay I'm, I'm hitting where I want to be at this point or if I was four strokes I'd be like I'm a little bit long here I need to pick that up so for my 200 breaststroke I always wanted to hit 13 14 strokes on that first 50 and then you know once you to be honest for me I personally found that if you could set up that first 50 well it sets your race really well for the rest of it whereas if you miss it on that first 50 hard to get it back at that stage so uh, the first 50 is so important you, you can't necessarily win a race at that point but if you don't set your own race up well you can definitely lose a race in the first 50. 
fascinating insight into just how hard it is. And we move on to the junior final of the 200 metre backstroke. Cormac Farron in lane zero closes two as Ray O'Shea is in one, Charlie Cassidy two, Tara Horgan in three, Senna Noonan in four, Matthew Walsh Hussey in five, David Powell in six, Niall McGeown is in seven. Alexander Newman in eight and Jericho Balgos, the furthest away from us in lane nine for the junior final of the backstroke. We're getting more out of Nick in terms of some of that technical stuff in the pool in a minute's time. Bust out the junior final. All right, junior final on their back and kicking fast underwater. Here we go, first to break out. That's lane number five, Shinnan Noonan. Aer Lingus, he's going to be pressured the whole way through. we got Walsh Hushy in the mix too. David Powell from Port Marnock and then Dara Horgan in lane number three. So we're coming through. These guys are looking to be around 216 or below as we approach the first 50. 29 high, just over 30.67 for Noonan. Walsh Hussey on a 30.86. And then out in third, 31-27, that's Charlie Cassidy from Dolphins swim team. 25 metres, not 125 metres to go in this two back now. These two race leaders looking really comfortable. Good rotation on those shoulders as we approach halfway mark. So they need to move, they need to move. They're right here just over on a 104.60 three for Noonan, Walsh Hussey just in front of him on a 4-4 four, four. and then we're branching out to Cassidy still in the mix on a 5 David Poy on a 6 and then we have a stack of 7s, 8s all the way out to Farron on a 12 good to see the youngsters here and competing, that's what it's all about but all the way through, 15 metres to go now, race leader, lane number 5 represent the NAC, Walsh Hussey he's closing out should be sub 140 here. He needs to be sub 140. Bringing it home. Let's see if he can bring it home on a 35 36 for a nice evening swim. 35 meters to go. The field is mixing up a little bit. A little bit of a move from the Dolphin Man over in lane number two. He might slip into second if he can keep that up. David Pye now dropped the fourth. Nice straight angle here. But they think he's going to hold on. The NAC local swimmer, Walsh Hussey. Let's see what time he goes. So all the way through, it was a 2.17. He's going to smash a 2.15.85 for the win. Nice job. Second place, he came through. He was looking good all the way down the last length. Dolphin swimmer, Charlie Cassidy on a 2.16.89. And then rounding out your top three is the fastest qualifier. Sean and Noonan on a 2.17.14. Another impressive set of swims there, and it was Matthew Walsh Hussey that's taken it home, 2.15.85. Just over two seconds quicker than his morning time. Charlie Cassidy as well, with a good improvement, a very good improvement to 2.16.89. Senna Noonan in third, David Powell fourth, Tara Horgan in fifth, all breaking that 2.20 barrier, but Matthew Walsh Hussey Pretty much always in control of that junior final. Yeah, definitely a great, great sim there by Matthew Walsh. You see, he, he, I was looking at his splits throughout that race, and he was saving a little bit of energy on that third 50 to make sure he had that extra kick to make sure he got that win on that last 50, uh, which is really good swim, and that's what you're, you're hoping for in an event like the 200 back ball to as keep those three, the second, third, and fourth 50 splits as close as possible together, and if possible, to get even faster by the time you get to that last 50. Uh, the negative, negative split is a tough thing to do, but a 200 back is an event where that's possible because you don't have the, the same uh, speed coming off the back wall start versus the dive. So you'll see a lot of the top, top 200 back in the world even splitting or sometimes even negative splitting, which is, which is really tough to do, but it's a great way to swim a 200 back. Well, that will be on show, you'd think, here in the senior final. We're going to have another hotly contested race here, Nathan Whiffen with the strongest swim this morning and by quite a distance at that at 20376 he holds a five or six second advantage and 
From Nathan's perspective coming into a race like this, you, you must look at the times beforehand. I know you're always trying to think about your own times and your own performance. There must be a part of you that always has a look at, at your, your opposition. And how do you go about making sure that no complacency sets in, even though you've got potentially a five, six second break based off morning times? I think it comes back to th that clock, the idea of you're always trying to get the best time possible. And from a very early age in swimming, that is, that is the goal. So it's kind of ingrained in swimmers at this stage to come to a meet like this. And regardless of if you're three, four, five seconds ahead, um, trying to get the best, the fastest possible race, the fastest possible time that you can do. And, but then you also you have the unexpected element of it. We saw Caden McCarthy in the 400 IM taking 14 seconds from his heat time. So you never actually just know what your competitors are going to do. So that's why it's great when you find yourself in a race with someone, but you can't bank on that. You have to focus on your race processes and execute that to the best of your ability. And then if you're lucky enough to find yourself in a race, that's when you just dig deep and try and, try and get that win. Yeah, it should be a fascinating final here to the 200 meter backstroke. Our third last event of the evening. We'll then be moving on to the 1500 heat final of the women's freestyle. And then the 50 meter butterfly to take us home for the last portion. Just after this final, we're going to have the presentations of those male 100 meter free and the female 100 meter breaststroke. Uh, which both took place in the last 20 minutes or so. But the final here of the senior 200 metre backstroke. Connor McMenamin in zero, Rory Lee in one, Bryden Byrne two, Brandon Biss in three, the aforementioned Nathan Whiffen in four, Adam Barnes five, Nettie Irwin in six, John Short, the 15 year old in seven, Cormac Donnellan in eight, and Emmett Cousins in nine. A form book would read that Whiffen. This is Whiffen's race to lose. It's never as simple as that in these high-pressure finals. We'll have to see how we get on with Andrew Bree commentating the big one. All right, here we go. A final 200-meter backstroke for the man. Fastest qualifier, Nathan Whiffen on a 2.03.76. His best is 1.59.87, so he will be looking to break that two minutes. Adam Barnes dropped some nice time this morning as well. Look out for him in lane number five. And then the swim Belfast, Brandon Biss in lane number four. A little bit of pressure too, but it's whiffing all the way through, 29-14. He didn't take it out as hard as this morning, so he's swimming this slightly different, but we should still see him take the lead all the way through. Barnes is a 2-9, so there's a six second gap. But these guys will be motivated to hang in there with Whiffen. 15 meters now to halfway mark. So he was a 60.13. But like I said this morning, he needs to be sub 60 if there's any hope in breaking that two minutes. Uh, just over 60.3 to 60.3 once again. Barnes in the mix. Barnes having a very impressive opening 100. As is Nettie Irwin from Limerick. He's come through nicely, also on a 101. So it's a good battle between Irwin and Barnes in five and six, but it's Whiffen now. Whiffen, 13 meters to his final wall. Let's see what kind of distance he gets off this. Opportunity to breathe and breathe on the backstroke all the way through. 133, just under 132.67 for Whiffen. Now, has he got the energy to really pick this up? 35 meters to go. Irwin looks like he's second, but it's anyone's game. Look out for Biss in three. Swim Belfast, he's moved up now to third. He took over Barnes, but no doubt about Nathan Whiffen. He's going to win this one. His best is a 159.8. I think he should be around a 2.02, 2.03. Reach, reach, reach all the way through. Slightly slower than this morning, 2.05.11. He takes the win. Oh, Biss comes through. Where did that come from? 20808. He was fourth with 35 meters to go. What a finishing 50 for him. And then in third place, let me check the scoreboard. Nettie Irwin was second at one stage. 20866 for third. Good job, backstrokers. And it does go to Nathan Whiffen, 20. 
5, 11 for Whiffen. He was always in control and just felt that nothing was ever really getting to him there. He was in a very steady position all the way. He didn't seem to have to overly extend and has won himself a, an Irish Open medal in very good circumstances. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's interesting watching the techniques of the, 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 the guys in that race there. From the very start, you could see that Nathan Whiffen had a, had a much higher stroke rate and a higher tempo, which he actually maintained the whole way through the race, which is a really difficult thing to do. So it was a really well-executed race from that point of view. And looking at his splits, he went 29-1, 31-2, 32-3, 32-4. So that's really consistent and a really uh, well-put-together race. Uh, and to come away as national champion, he was silver in that foreign freestyle last night. Uh, so to move one better there this evening and get the gold medal is 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 something I'm sure he'll be happy with. He was Irish champion, uh, short course champion at the national championships, national short course championships here before Christmas. So to back that up and win the Irish Open is is really impress impressive. Uh, so I'm sure he'll be happy with that. Yeah, good swims as well from Brandon Biss and Nettie Irwin. In the second and third, Biss from Swim Belfast, just 17 years of age. A very strong swim from him to get through for second. Nettie Irwin in third as well. Both of them improving on their morning times. So again, as we've said many a time, nothing more you can ask for from these swimmers. And all of them going to collect a, a well-deserved medal at the end of the night. Yeah, it was a, a great swim as well from Brandon Biss there, as you said. Improved from his morning time. I actually think that this morning swim was a PB. And then again, another PB tonight. So two 200 backs, two PBs. It's, 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 it's as good as it gets. And a, a, a national silver medal along with it is, is really strong, strong swimming from the 17-year-old there. Yeah, we're going to have the presentations now for the male 100 freestyle and the women's 400 or women's 100 meter breaststroke should I say uh, the winner obviously of the men's 100 meter freestyle Max McCusker beating Callum Bain and Jordan Sloan in a packed finish Jack Grace was there in fourth Robert Powell David Thompson all swimming very good races but it was McCusker that was the only one this morning to go sub 50 and he backed it up and was the only one to go sub 50 again in the final yeah, definitely. It's, it's really great swimming by Max. Um, he's not done yet this evening. He also has a 50 fly coming up right after this presentation. So he's a busy man this evening, but I'm sure he'll be happy to be national champion. He won the Irish national team trials here last year as well. So to back that up is really good. And Callum Bain getting the silver medal in the 100, which is his focus is, is probably more so on the 50. He just missed out on breaking that 50 barrier for the first time. He was 50.05, uh, which was a PB for him, but just off making that uh, that barrier. We spoke about barriers earlier, and the 50 point is definitely a big one. And this is really good to see. We've got Shane Ryan, who's the Irish senior record holder in this event, uh, given the medals. A lot of these guys would have been on relay teams together. Uh, I mean, Shane, Jordan, and uh, Max were on the men's 4x1 relay at the European Championships uh, uh, last year. Uh, looking to qualify that team for the Tokyo Games and then and then Callum has raced a Commonwealth Games on a 4x1 freestyle relay as well so there's a lot of in, there was a lot of international experience in that final uh, and really was a, a close race in the end Yeah, great to see and, and most deservedly getting there moments on the podium moments that last a lifetime Max McCusker, as you mentioned, is going to be in action yet again in perhaps around 20 minutes, 20, 25 minutes' time in the final event of the night, the 50-metre butterfly. Will very be a warm favourite for that race, having gone sub-24 in the prelims this morning. But we're now moving on to the presentation of the 100-metre breaststroke final. And that went the way of Neve Coyne. And it went the way and Eve Coyne in very impressive circumstances. Molly Maine, a very credible second, having won yesterday herself, and Emer Doyle in a third as well. An excellent swim from Emer. Yeah, it was brilliant swimming from the girls there in that 100 breaststroke. Neve Coyne was, was 
really showing her class there. She's raced at Europeans, she's raced at World Championships, she's a lot of international experience and she showed her class going out, going out strong and taking it home uh, to get under that European, uh, senior European consideration standard which are going to be held in Rome later on this summer. And Molly Main is also under that consideration standard for the European Juniors, so there's a lot to look forward to a lot to look forward to for these girls racing heading into the summer yeah very much so getting their photos taken as well which is going to lead us on now to the next event the second last event of the evening which is the women's 1500 meter freestyle we saw a heat of this this morning I'm just getting a, a heat winner here this evening and it's going to be a potential opportunity for Grace Hodgins, who we saw won the 400 metre freestyle yesterday. The meet record at 16.56.82 at the moment. She's qualified with a time of 17.04. Is there any chance she can get below that? Yeah, I think definitely after the form we saw on that 400 freestyle yesterday, there's, there's every chance that uh, Grace will be going able to go sub-17. I'm sure that'll be the aim and get as close as possible to that meet record, which would be great to see. We've also got Ella Carroll from uh, the National Centre in Limerick, being coached by John Sharanik down there, looking to qualify for the European Junior Championships. She just missed out on that consideration standard in the 400, but I think she's in with a really, really good, strong chance uh, in this 1500. Oh, yeah, in this 1500 here today. We've also got uh, Grace Cochrane from 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 Lurgan as well, the 15-year-old. She'll be looking to qualify for a European Youth Olympics, uh, but. The European Youth Olympics actually doesn't have the 1500 as part of their programme, so this isn't an event she can qualify in, but that 800, which is coming later in the week, will be her focus in trying to get a consideration time for that. They've only recently, only in the Tokyo Olympics, did they actually add the women's 1500 to the programme. Before that, it was always the men's did the 1500 and the women did the 800, but in the Tokyo Olympics, they added some extra events, so they added the men's 800, the women's 1500, and the mixed 4x1 medley relay. Uh, which is a really exciting relay to watch uh, which has meant that these 1500s for the women has become more competitive because there's Olympic spots up for grab and the same in the men's 800 has become more more uh, competitive and more people are specialising in it trying to get those international international spots for Olympics and World Championships and Europeans. Now, swimmers coming out here starting off with Laura Fahey in lane 9 in lane 0 was Anna Nikoshina from Port Marnock in 8 was Amy Dawson from Lisburn, Rebecca Friel in one. Jessica Robson in the seven. In lane two is Grace Cochrane. In sixth is Ruth Kelly. She's coming onto your screen there from New Ross. In three is Hazel Bentley from Asgard. And then the two main protagonists in this in five, Ella Carroll, the 17-year-old from Limerick. And in four is Grace Hodgins, the 17-year-old from Trojan an opportunity to add to her 400 metre victory yesterday. She'll be looking to do so. Yeah, this the tactical element of a race like the 1500 is so important. The girls have to split this right and get into a, a rhythm early on and hold that right throughout the race. They'll be looking to hit a certain time for each 100 and hold that the whole way through the race. Uh, and then hopefully save a little bit of a kick for the last 50, 100 metres where they'll drop down but in general you're looking to keep a consistent pace right through this race and that's what they'll be aiming for in this 1500. Yeah, really important times here, the preparation for a race such as this, such a mammoth test of stamina. We'll take in and around that 16, 17, 18 minute mark to complete and I saw from race this morning, how grueling it can be come that final two, three hundred metres but they're away and Andrew Bree is going to take you through this 1500 metre final Grace Hodgins in lane four your favourite. Alright, welcome back after our medal ceremony there, we have Grace Hodgins fastest in, so we had one heat this morning this is our faster heat this evening, I thought we had two back-to-back 1500s earlier but splitting them up but it's Hodgins taking it tonight now we got 30 lengths here folks so settle in and let's see if these girls are going to give us a nice race we got 30.7 31 2 for Carl and then Bentley in 31 2 also 
positions four and five also in the 32. So not much difference as we approach 15 meters from our first turn at this end. So 100 meters into this now, Hodgins, the Trojan swimmer, still in front. She's a 104.24, right behind her, Carl, 104.81. And then a new third position is Rebecca Freel out there. She's a 105, 106, I think it just disappeared just before my eyes caught it. But if we can maintain this kind of tempo coming through, it's going to be a good old battle all the way up. And we have two leading, but Freel looking pretty good in lane number one. And then with the blue cap, Bentley of Asgard in lane number three. There's nothing between three and four. Look at that. Eight one hundredths of a second. All right, 200 meters now approaching. Should be sub, sub 210. It's going to be just over this evening, maybe 11 or 12. Let's check it in. 212.71 for Hodgins, still in front. Carl second, 213.2. Another between Bentley and Freel. We have Cochran coming in fifth on a 218.7. And then we have Jessica Robson on a 219.65. And the rest of the swimmers just over that 220 mark with a stack of 221s with Fahi from Glen Alban on a 224. But all right, 250 meters now, 25 lengths to go. We'll let them settle in here, take a split. See what they're averaging per 50. So we can get a good indication if they're picking up the pace as we go through each block of 500 meters. So, like I said earlier, they should be averaging 34s for around that low 17-minute mark. All right, 34-38 to the feet on that last 50 split. With about a 37-38 tempo on the stroke, on the finish tempo trainer, if you've ever used them. Great tool for building rhythm in the stroke and learning the difference between fast pace. Now, there's only one pace in racing, fast pace. So all the way through, Grace now making a little bit more of a move. She's a good body, length and a half up on Ella Carroll. And still the Asgard swimmer in three, holding on for third. So 55 to 57s. And then just over the four minute mark, 02 and 04s, with the rest of the field coming in, six seconds down on that, with a 408 for Cochrane. And then Dawson through Lisburn, Lisburn in seven and eight, Robson and Dawson, 410 and 411. They'll know each other very, very well. Probably knocked out a few serious swim sessions there. All right, so she was a 108.8 to the feet there for that last 100 meter split, 108. So again, it's got to be average in 34 mids. There's no getting away from it. Freel now in fourth, and Cochran slightly moved up. But it's going to be hard to separate these first four now as we approach. 21 lengths to go. Thirty four tempo, very controlled, Sun Yang style. Distance per stroke. Uh, she's going to come through now. If this is five hondo, boom. So she has a 109.2 on that split. Still keeping it pretty even. She went from a 108 to a 
5.92. Carl on a 4, 5.30, 5.43. She's four seconds back. Bentley coming through on a 52.3 with Freel right on her heels on a 54.0. Cochrane still in fifth on a 58. Dawson just over the six minute mark on a 02. Kelly right beside her on a 603. And then Robson right behind her on a 604. So there's a nice little mix. Hodgins on the far wall turning 613. Carl 619. Bit of a gap now. Let's see. Check back in. Has she changed any rate? She was 34, 35 on that last 100 meters. She's checking in on a 35 high on that stroke rate. So very, very controlled. Turns 109.7. So still keeping, got to keep it under that 110 mark, so that's 35 averages, but remember, there's turning involved. It's not just touching the wall with the hands. They have to get their full body round and then back, hit that wall as quickly as they can and bounce. Hodgins all the way through. So that's 17 minutes of some barrier. If she can put a little bit of pressure on that now as we approach this next turn. We're getting through halfway. Here we go. 109 low again. 109. Very, very consistent on those splits. She turned just under the eight minutes on a 7.58. Carl threw on a 8.06.75. Asgard swimmer Hazel Bentley maintaining the third position quite strongly, but a little bit of pressure from Freel in one and Cochrane in two. Anything can mix up on that last 500. Freel's looking actually like she's picking it up a little bit over there in lane number one. Stroke rate dropped a little bit into the 34s now for Hodgins. That's okay though. So this is 14 lengths to go. 14 to go with this wall. Okay, off she goes again. 907.46. Nine eighteen ninety nine for Carl. Okay, thirty four point nine nine on that split. She's creeping up more towards the thirty fives now. See if she can maintain. Got to be keeping under, got to be under those 34s for this final assault. So we've got 12 lengths to go now. 12 lengths at this wall. 600 meters of this 1500 remaining. A dominating swim race leader coming through now. It's probably going to be a 109 to the feet. Another 109, so she was 34.7, slightly faster than the last 50 on a 34.9. So she turns that last 100 in a 109.7 on the manual watch. Probably a little bit more accurate with the timing pods. So 
So a little bit of a race kicking in now. Lanes three, two and one. Check them out as we continue through this last 600. Hudgens turning, another 34 mid. Good, she's keeping that pace up. 34, six to the feet on that one from where I'm standing. But she's continued the domination. Stroke rate hasn't very varied much in terms of space there. She's constantly on that 34, 35. Thirty-five four on that last stroke rate as she approaches four hundred meters to go. Let's check in. She's now split a thirty-four eight, still keeping it under. She's up pretty fast, but that's all right. You need that oxygen if you've been swimming for this long. After this turn, she's got nine lengths left, bringing it home. Eleven forty-three for Carl. Now the Asgard swimmer Bentley's dropped into fourth with Grace Cochran in lane number two, making a slight move as they approach 10 lengths to go. 500 now for them. So 400 coming up. 435 meters exactly for Hodgins. Averaging 34 mids to 34 highs consistently in this 1500. So we got a man's completely different event coming up after this. We got the man's 50 meter butterfly. And then that's a wrap for day two. Not even halfway, folks. We got three more days of racing here in Dublin. So she's turning. So that was a 109 split. Again, about a 34 mid. Turns in a 12, 36, 0, 9 with 400 meters to go. It's going to be a pretty tight effort to make and break that 17 minutes, but we'll see what happens. Seven lengths now for Hodgins. Trojan all the way through. 13, 11, 02. The Lurgan swimmers definitely made some ground there on a 316. She's taken a chunk out of Bentley on a 321, four seconds, and now Freel, three seconds behind Bentley, could be putting a little bit of pressure on there in their last 400 meters. They're going to know exactly where they are with the race counters at the scoreboard end of the pool. Okay, 13, 45, 71, 300 to go. She's going to have to hit 65s all the way through, I think. Looks like she is picking it up. Check in here on the rate. Ah, yeah, about 36 on the, on, the, on the button. So she has gone from 34 rates up to 36, which is nice. So she knows exactly what she's doing. Five lengths to go, 250 meters left in this 1500 meter grueling 30 lengths of the big pool, as we like to call it. Nice to be back in the Olympic sized pool. We had a great Irish championships in December. Some nice swimming and more to come this summer. With some big names missing this week. They've already done their times for the Europeans or Worlds with Commonwealth Games teams still to be selected. So she was averaging 109s. Let's see what she hits to this wall. It's going to be a 109.4 again. 300 to go. It's 200 to go, apologies. 200 to go for her, 300 for the rest. So I'm predicting if she goes another kind of 109 and then another one, she's going to be around her PB, 1704. But we might raise the roof for her on the last length and see if she can crush out a six beat kick and finish strongly. 150 meters to go now for Hodgins. She's dominated from the start. 
about 40 meters up on the rest of the field now. She's got 125 meters to go. Yeah, the stroke rate's creeping up. 36 mids there. So she's incrementally moving up. Last length, ring that bell. Her last 200 meters was a 218.0. But that was a 108. That's the first time she's broken into the 108 world. 108.6. But she's going to have to drop some crazy time now to get onto that 17 minute barrier. But that's okay. 1704 her best. Not easy out there on your own. Carol still second. And Cochrane still third from Lurgan. Last length now for Hodgins. 33.9 there, so she's taking chunks off her splits. Now she's picking it up. Look at her go. Let's check in on the rate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up in the 38, 39 zone now for the rate as she cruises through. So how close to 17 minutes is she going to get? Just over on the big clock now, 17.04 is her best. Still a very, very brave swim. Well done, Grace Hodgins, 17.09, not bad. 17.09.89 takes the win. Ella Carl just turning there at the far end. I had to do a double take as she was right behind her, but she's a good 50 meters off the race, race winner. Ella Carroll now coming through representing the National Centre in Limerick. She'll be around 40 something. There she goes, 17.44.64 for Carroll. And then we have our Lurgan swimmer coming in over in lane number two. That's Grace Cochran. She kept it steady for about six, seven hundred meters, and then she broke through, took over Bentley. So it's Lurgan coming in third there. Grace Cochran, 18.08. Nice noise from the crowd. Coach looks happy. 18.08.13. And who wants it more? I think it's going to be Asgard just about. Hazel Bentley, maybe just half a length, of, half a body length ahead. She touches. Fourth on a 18, 25, 36. Not far behind her, Rebecca Frail. They had a good old fight all the way through on a 18, 26, 22. There is your top five distance swimmers for tonight. We got one length of butterfly left for the men. And then that's us for day two here at the National Aquatic Center in Dublin. Well done. One more swimmer to go. Put your hands together for all these women as they finish up this 30 length adventure. One more to go. Let's show our appreciation. I know I couldn't get in there and do 30 lengths. Here we go. Good job swimmers. Overall well done. 50 fly to go. A yeah, great performance by all 10 in the women's 1500 meter freestyle. Grace Hodgins, 17.09, 89. A very good swim from her, Ella Carroll, in second. And 15 year old Grace Cochrane with a big swim of 18.08, bettering her seed time by 21 seconds on this occasion as well. And that was well noted by a, a good traveling team from Lurgan to our left here in the commentary box as well. But Grace Hodgins. She's absolutely super throughout that race. Yeah, it's brilliant. Grace is really, really showing her form there. Uh, she's really, really swimming well. Uh, she already quali or met the consideration standard for the 400 freestyle yesterday. And again, she was under it there in that 1500. In actual fact, I think she was under the 800 consideration standard at the 800 mark. So really showing her class there. And she'll be looking forward to, to racing at European, cha or European Junior Championships this later on this summer. Uh, I was watching taking note of her splits as Andrew Bree was going through that there and she was hitting 34s consistently at every single 50 almost for a whole 1500 is, is really impressive and then she had a little bit of a kick at the end to go a little bit faster on the last 100 uh, which is really what you're looking for in, in an event like this so that was a brilliant brilliant swim there from, from Grace uh, and Ella Carroll coming in second from Limerick uh, did a great job as well um, 
and then Grace Cochrane, as you mentioned from Lurgan, 15 year old, a, a real talent coming up, getting a bronze medal in the senior category is really impressive, impressive for a 15 year old and she'll be looking forward to her 800 which is a great opportunity for her to qualify for the European Youth Olympic Festival uh, as well this summer. Yeah, it leads us on nicely to our last event of the day, which is the 50 metre men's butterfly, of which we have a B final, a junior final, and a senior final. Starting off with this B final, Bryden Byrne in zero, Harry Winston in one, Adam Lynch in two, Daniel Mulholland three, Morgan Berryman in four, Adam Geddes five, Alexander McMullen in six, Thomas O'Neill in seven, Ollie Brennan in eight, and Alfie Shaw in nine, from the 1500 to the 50 metres. Long one to the short splash and dash 50 meter butterfly. And Berryman in lane four, probably the favourite based off what we've seen thus far in the seed times. All right, only one swimmer qualifying under 27 seconds there. That's Morgan Berryman in the white cap. He was up first, but he's being unput under pressure already by Adam Gaddis from Limerick. Coming through in about 11.4 seconds on this 50 meter fly. You have to go 26 low, maybe 26 mid to win this. Berryman's just there. He had a nice 100 breaststroke. He's finishing off today with a 50 fly win oh bit of a glide 26.56 takes the win once again he's the only man under 27 seconds adam geddes had a nice breakout with about five strokes and then slipped back into second and alexander mcmullen coming through i like that from banger 27.03 he'll be happy with that good first final one to go two to go yeah, brilliant swim from Morgan Berryman, 26.56. This morning, 26.81. So a little bit of an improvement on that. Adam Geddes and Alexander McMullen with a late flourish to come third at 27.03. Some very good swims on offer there. And Berryman taking home the B final. Yeah, it was a great swim there from Morgan. Improving on his time from this morning's heats and the only man to go sub-27. So I'm sure he'll be happy with that. And now we move on to, to the junior final. Uh, looking at these guys, we'll be looking to 50 fly is such an explosive, powerful event. They'll really need to look into maximise that momentum off the black blocks, have really good, strong underwaters, nail that breakout and carry that momentum through the first 15, 20, 25 metres of the race. And then as we get to the finish, getting that head down and trying to get a touch and, and finish as strong as possible. And move on to the junior final. Liam O'Connor, Ronan Kilcoyne, John Mulhall, Dara Morgan, Ushin Tibet, Michael Kyo, Senna Noonan, Adam Coggan, Ewan McLeod and David Leggett are your ten going into the pool for the junior final. All right, junior final underway. Oshin Tibet fast as in. He was at 26.84. He's going to be pressured, though. Four 100s of a second behind him. Turn your swimmer, Michael Kyo, coming through once again. Levin lows there. It's the black cap with the white tee. Let's see if he can close out this 50 fly. There's a longer reach from Tibet, though. There's a longer reach. It's anyone's game, but I think the white tee and the black cap's going to win at 26.15. Nice 50 fly, Michael Kyo. He wins it. Second place out in lane number three, that's Dara Morgan, 26.70. And then third, Oshin Tibet on a 26.40.74. Not 47, 74. Good job, Flyers. One more final. And that junior final goes to Michael Kyo of Terenure, 26.15 in that fifth lane there. Of Dara Morgan from Cool Mine. And Oshin Tibet right there with him. Ronan Kilcoyne. Ewan McLeod, John Mulhall and Senna Noonan all going sub-27. But Michael Kyo getting on top and getting on top quite comprehensively at the line there. Yeah, he's trying to sw he, he swam a strong race right there. Uh, I looked like he maybe misjudged his finish at the end and I thought he might get caught, but he really did control that race from the start and he really did enough so that he, he won that race. It's six guys sub-27, which is a big improvement from, from this morning where there was only three of them were sub-27 this morning. So again, moving that on from heats to finals is... Is, is what it's all about. So those junior swimmers will be happy with, it all, with, with their swims there and moving on to the senior final now, which we should see some, some fast swimming. We've got Max McCusker who's 
fresh off winning that 100 freestyle earlier on in the session. Is the fastest, is the only guy to have gone sub 24 this morning. So be looking for him to see if he can improve on his time and uh, see how fast he can go. Uh, a lot of these guys actually were racing in the 100 freestyle, so they're doubling up. It's not just Max that's doubling up here. We have Killian Colvin is also doubling up. Um, yeah, and Conor Fitzgerald, the 16-year-old, is, 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 is doing that double as well. So quite a few of these guys have already raced this evening, so it'll be how they're maximising their recovery uh, so that they're ready to go in this final. And now we're going to move on to the 50-metre butterfly final for the men's, our final event of the day, of what's been an excellent day here at the Irish Open Championships of 2022, the day two finals. Now this could be a pulsating affair at that. Looking at the names, we've had Mac Max McCusker, who's already taken out the 100 meter freestyle, which was a deep race at that earlier on this evening. On times, you'd have to think he's gonna go and double up here. Yeah, he's definitely the favorite on, on paper. Uh, you even saw on that 100 freestyle, it was that off that dive, he was so explosive and him and Callum Bain, who is also a very good 50 fly swimmer, but he's not swimming it here this, this, at this meet. Um, but they're really, really powerful. Those underwaters off the dive to first 15. So look for Max to be probably ahead of the field by the time it gets to 15, and, and he'll try to be pulling away the whole way through, that, through the race. Uh, swimming sub 24 for the 50 fly is, is, is fairly moving, so it was an impressive swim this morning. So hopefully he can move that on and go a little bit quicker tonight. Yeah, well, that will be the aim for him. To be honest, if he was to match or improve on that morning time, you'd have to think it's going to be very difficult for one of these fellow swimmers to go and beat him. That being said, with the likes of Alex McClellan Marr, Charlie Eatwell, both who posted 25.66 this morning, Killian Calvin's in there as well, Sam Winston, if he's not on his A game, there's plenty of men there that can easily turn him over if he wasn't on a going day. Yeah, for sure. The 50s, they're, they're such small margins that if if you're off a little bit on your dive or a breakout, it can be the difference between uh, a medal and not getting a position at all. So you have to make sure all those skills are nailed, ready and on uh, to get the times that you're looking for. Yeah, the swimmers now coming out onto their podium places here for the 50 meter butterfly final. Uh, going through them one by one once they've all got to their position, starting off over in the far side, Finley Wright in lane nine for Bambridge, the 18-year-old in lane zero, closest to us, Connor Johnson from Kilkenny. 18, Dylan Regist from Lisburn is over in eight. In one is Brogan McAvinney from Kilkenny. Connor Fitzgerald from Splash World Sharks is in seven. Sam Winston from Aer Lingus is in two. Killian Colvin from the local club NAC is in six. Charlie Eatwell in three for Lards. Alex McClellan Marr in NCL in five. And Max McCusker. A man that is looking to double up this evening with two gold medals at the Irish Open Championships. He won the 100 metre freestyle. Can he add the 50 metre butterfly to the collection this evening? As it has been throughout the entire day, we'll be leaving you over to Andrew Bree to take us home. For what will be a very fast way to finish off the day two Irish Open Championships in the butterfly final. All right, they're off now for the last final of day two here at the National Championships. Look at that breakout from McCusker. Way ahead of the rest of the field as he comes through in a nine point high in this 50 fly. There's nobody catching him. He was 23 point this morning. He's probably going to go at 23 6, 23 7 if he can hit that wall. Three strokes to go. McCusker wins at 23 44. That's pretty slick. Second, who have we got? We got Connor Fitzgerald from Splash World on a 25 35. And then rounding out your top three, Sam Winston on a 25-39. That's your top three, very, very close. And ladies and gentlemen, keep those hands together because as you see on the big board, that is a Irish senior record. What a way to finish the evening here in the National Aquatic Centre. Max McCusker, he hasn't just won the 50 metre butterfly, he has broken the Irish senior record in the process. 23-4-4, he's beaten it by 0.21 of a second. What a performance from McCusker. The rest of them were all in a line, merely a second between, second to tenth. But he was two seconds ahead of them 
it was almost like we were watching two polar opposite races. McCusker was just out in front, and what a performance to bring in the evening. An Irish senior record broken. Yeah, what a way to finish off the evening. And, oh, we've had two records, two Irish records today, an Irish junior record to start off the session, and an Irish senior record to finish the session. What, what more can you want? That was a, a brilliantly executed race from Max McCusker there. You could really see off the dive, maximizing those underwater kicks. He's training over in uh, Florida State over in America where they're swimming short course yards where you really, really have to have strong underwaters. And you really see him maximize those in that first 15 meters, a great breakout. And then he stayed nice and flat and got that high turnover to finish in an Irish record. Breaking Barry Murphy's record, which has stood for a long few years. Barry was a, an Irish Olympian. So to break that record, he's, he's put himself in a, a good category there and a, a brilliant swim by Max. Yeah, excellent from Max McCusker, and that brings to a close the fantastic action we've seen this evening. Just looking back at some of those finals, plenty to obviously discuss, starting off with the IM. The way it started was Liam Custer breaking the Irish junior record in that, where he beat Caden McCarthy, the two of them coming well clear in that event. The 200-metre backstroke went the way of Danielle Hill, even though it wasn't her preferred distance with the backstroke she still beat Maria Godden in a pulsating finish as well on that occasion Max McCuster his first action of the evening was winning the 100 meter freestyle where he beat Callum Bain and Jordan Sloan on that occasion and moved on to the 100 meter breaststroke for the women Neve Coyne a very good winner on that occasion won very comfortably from Molly Main and Emer Doyle we had Nathan Whiffen taking out the 200 meter backstroke Grace Hodgins taking over the 1500 metre freestyle for the women and then we saw the Irish senior record there from Max McCusker. We're going to have a few presentations, the male 200 metre backstroke, the female 1500 metre free and then obviously the male 50 butterfly that will be going the way of Max McCusker. So that will be all to come in the next couple of minutes and hopefully just like we did Last evening, I'll be going down poolside to try and get a couple of interviews from a few of the stars of this evening's action. So bear with me as I head down to poolside and I'll leave you in the capable hands of Nick who will take you through potentially the, the finals and some of the, the fantastic performances we've seen today and also run you through the presentations when they do so happen. I think they're going to be happening in around a minute's time. So stay tuned for that and stay tuned for those interviews as we'll look to try and get hold of Max McCusker himself and get a few words from the new Irish senior record holder of the 50 metre butterfly. Yeah, it's been a brilliant, brilliant evening of swimming. I think when you start the, the meet off with an Irish junior record with Liam Custer in the 400 IM and then you finish it at the end with another Irish record, an Irish senior record just there we just saw by, by Max McCusker. Um, Liam was, had a brilliant swim there in that 400 IM at the start of the meet to get that junior record. He represents uh, Sunday Wales Swimming Club but he's actually training out in the States uh, with Sarasota Sharks and he's joining Stanford in September in college, he's starting over there. And similarly, we have Max there breaking that Irish senior record. He's a senior, he was a senior racing at NCAAs uh, just a couple of weeks ago for Florida State. Uh, and he's representing Dolphin Swimming Club here at the Irish National Championships. He a double, double gold champion there today. Uh, the 100 freestyle earlier on the, the meet and then that 50 fly win there which is which is Irish senior record and a brilliant, brilliant performance by him. Some of the other highlights from, from this evening's session uh, was that women's 100 breaststroke where Neve Coyne secured a, a, qualifica a consideration standard in that women's 100 breaststroke uh, going sub 68 for that 100 breaststroke going 67 uh, for that swim which was a really really strong performance by, by her and sets her up hopefully for, for an exciting summer of, of, of swimming. We're just now waiting to, for all the medal winners in the men's 200 back, the women's 1500 freestyle and that 50 fly that has just been to, to gather and then we, we'll take you to some presentations and then Andrew will hopefully be poolside with some of the swimmers to get some of their reactions after their, their, their swimming this evening.
the first presentation that we're going to have up here is the men's 200 back where Nathan Whiffen took that gold. He represented Lyon Swimming Club, but he's actually based over and he's studying in England. He's swimming at Loughborough University over there alongside his, his twin brother, Daniel Whiffen, who's already pre-selected for the European Championships and also the Commonwealth Games. So Nathan's had a, a busy start to the meet. He was 400 freestyle silver Our champion. medals will be presented this evening by Sarah Keane, back that up with a gold president medal of the, the Olympic the Federation of Ireland today. and also CEO of Swim Island. So presenting these medals there today, I think we actually get this evening, these last set of medal presentations, we have Sarah Keane, Our CEO medalists of Swim Ireland. We need down um, to the deck are she's Max McCusker, Connor Fitzgerald, Sam Winston, Grace Hodgins, Ella Carroll, We're Grace Cochran, these guys ready and we'll Nathan get them on Whiffin, the Brandon Biss and Ned very Irwin. shortly. Some of the other highlights, that personal highlights for me in that um, this evening session, we had Connor Fitzgerald swim a massive, massive time in the men's 100 freestyle. He's a 16-year-old who qualified for the European, or met the consideration standard for the European Youth Olympic Festival. He also picked up that silver medal in that 50 freestyle in that last event. So he had a. So really we're going to move on to the presentation uh, for the evening. men's 200 meter backstroke. Medals presented by Sarah Keane, president of the OFI and CEO of Swim Island. Our bronze medal goes to Neddy Irwin from National Centre Limerick Dolphins. So we, we're, the guys are on the on the podium now. We've got bronze medalist. The boys are good. Neddy Irwin, representing National Centre uh, Limerick. So he picked up here. Our silver medal goes to Brandon Biss from Swim we also Belfast. Have Brandon Briss, who had. Two PBs from two swims in the tuna back today to go sub 210 in the morning, 209 and then to go 208 there in the, the final. And as we were speaking, we've got Nathan Whiffen getting that gold medal in that 200 backstroke. Uh, a super performance for him after picking up that silver medal in the 400 freestyle. We, we're going to see a lot more of Nathan, I think, uh, as the next couple of days in this meet. He's got a busy schedule, so we'll see him in the 800 freestyle uh, and some other events as the meet goes on. So a lot more to look forward to for sure. The next presentation that we're going to have up is the women's 1500 freestyle. The women's 1500 freestyle. We had a, a super swim there from Grace Hodgins, the young swimmer from Trojan Swim Club. She was under the consideration standard for that 1500 for that European Junior Championships, which are going to be held later on this summer. Uh, so she had a fantastic swim. I was watching her splits right through that race and. Pretty much every single 50 she swam, she was 34 point, 34 point, 34 point, and had a little bit of a, a kick on that last 100 to get that last 100 faster and get under that consideration standard. We can just see these girls now getting on the podium. In third place, we have the 15 year old from Lurgan. So, what, what an experience for a 15 year old to stand on the podium and get your potentially your first senior medal and presented by Sarah Keane, as he said, the CEO of Irish Swim in Swim Ireland. In second place, we have Ella Carroll from the National Centre, training down at the National Centre in Limerick, and Grace Hodgins from Trojan, who was under that consideration standard for the European Junior Championships. It's great swimming by those girls and we'll see them back later on tomorrow in the next couple of days for the 800 freestyle which I'm sure is still to come and we're looking for more fast swimming. And that, that brings us now into our final presentation which is the men's 50 fly where we had that Irish senior record from Max McCusker which was a, a brilliant swim. As you mentioned, the previous record was held by Barry Murphy and it was held since to Barry Murphy, an Irish Olympian in, in, in London in 2012, a, a brilliant sprinter. He, he was the Irish record holder previously to Max McCusker. It's 20, 23.65 and Max time there of 23.44 goes under that. So a brilliant swim by Max, doubling up on his 100 freestyle victory earlier on in the session. Uh, with a 50 fly, I'm sure he'll be very pleased with his evening's work. The guys are just getting on the podium now, and as you can see, in, in third place, we had Sam Winston from Aer Lingus Swimming Club. 
It's a brilliant swim for him to get on that podium and get that medal. In second place, we had Connor Fitzgerald, who was under that consideration standard for the 100 freestyle earlier on in the earlier on in the session. The 16-year-old European Youth Olympics. What a what, what a he's under the consideration standard for the European Youth Olympics later on this summer. And what a talent he is, and definitely one for the future. And then Max McCusker, the man of the moment, with that Irish senior record in that 50 fly after his 100 freestyle victory. So fantastic performances all around this evening. Two Irish records, an Irish junior record and an Irish senior record to finish us off. So great days, great days of racing and hopefully we'll see more to come. I think we'll, we'll pass now down to Andrews on pool deck. He's looking to get some interviews with some of the swimmers. Maybe we might get to speak to Max there after his performances. So. So yeah, I think we're just getting ready. The swimmers doing the doing the interviews are just getting ready on pool deck. Tomorrow we have a, an exciting day of swimming coming up tomorrow as well. We have the women's 400 IM, and I'll pass on to Andrew on poolside with Neve Coyne. Interview with Neve Coyne, who's won the 100 meter breaststroke for the women today. Neve, you must have been absolutely delighted with that. And a very solid swim this morning as well, must have put you in a pretty good mind space going into that final. Yeah, I knew I had to get after it this morning and um, kind of put myself in a position to go fast tonight. Um, this morning it didn't feel that good, but tonight felt a lot better. And in that final situation when you're being pushed by the likes of Molly and Emer and stuff like that, it must help bring you along and obviously it takes out another second or two.
to wrap of the Irish Open Championships for 2022, but we'll be back again in the morning at around 20 past nine for the day three heats and again at around half five for the day three final. So make sure to stay in touch with us on the Swim Ireland social media channels and also by tuning in to the Swim Ireland YouTube channel tomorrow morning. But for myself and from Nicholas up in the commentary box, it's goodbye for now. Nope.